Check, 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 one, two. Give me the thumbs up. If you guys are trolling me, I'm going to be fucking pissed. I'm saying that right now because everything checked out on my side. So I'm just saying, I'm about to like smash this table if you guys are fucking with me. I'm just saying. Check, check, check. We good? Give me the thumbs up. Again, I have no, everything's good on my end, so I need you guys to know. We can, okay, okay. Let's reset this bitch. Holy fuck. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the City Life Project YouTube channel for yet another live fight companion, Fury FC 88, and we have a great one here today. Honestly, one of the high, most highly anticipated main events in Fury FC, I would say in the last two years, we have Wright versus Borrego. It's going to be awesome. And you know what's even more awesome is we have the first two fighters here, Slate Passmore against Dallas Dodd, who both thought that they were going to be fighting on the prelims yesterday. They woke up today, and look at that. They are now bumped up to the main event. So let's freaking go. You guys can follow along on Fight Pass, and sorry about that technical issue. I had no idea why that happened, to be perfectly honest. I always do a test before my show. Everything was good. That's why I thought you guys were messing with me. I was like, oh, man, they know I've been having a rough day, and they're just messing with me. But uh, anyways, if you're new to the channel, uh, smash that like button and subscribe. We do live Fight Companions every single weekend, and this will be the last Fight Companion until uh, next weekend. But we will be live tomorrow for the Rush City Fight Show. Again, sorry about that intro. I literally thought you guys were messing with me. Uh, round one, let's get it on. Let's get it on. It's on UFC Fight Pass, my man. It's on UFC Fight Pass. Dude on the left looks like Chubb Anthony Smith. What's up, Denial? What's up, Sean? We weren't fucking with you. <laughs> I was definitely on mute. Actually, I, I had to like unplug my mic and just plug it back in. Um, like I, because I was hearing myself through my pen. But anyways, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, what's up, Ethan? Good to see you, Sean. We got Chris Cushman in the house as well. What's up, brother? <laughs> That's why I got to always have the chat up. Always have the chat up, right, guys? Anyways, one minute into this. Oh, and a nice little knee there by Dallas Dodd. Another knee to the body by Dodd. Again, Dodd in the blue corner. Late pass more in the red. Luckily, we didn't have much to highlight here. Both these guys coming off the amateur scene. Dallas Dodd making his debut in pro mixed martial arts. And the great Slate Passmore coming off his debut loss as a pro. Hey, what's up, TG? Good to see you. Keep working on the vocals for the rest of the week. Yeah, hopefully my voice sounds okay, guys. I literally had no voice this morning. I had no voice this morning. So I've been literally like warming my voice up for like, five hours because i have to do a podcast later for uh for the hockey show that i do um so yeah but anyways we're here oh my god it's a bumpy so it's been a bumpy day it's been a bumpy ride all day but we're here ladies and gentlemen we're here i'm drinking lemon water <laughs> all day lemon and honey all day lemon and honey again sorry for that speed bump in the beginning guys but uh, let's turn our attention back to this fight here and again i'm just so excited to see we got a great crowd here for little fury fc I very much come around on this promotion. I used to think it was like absolute, absolute dog shit, but you know what? It's actually, they're continuing to sign great local talent in Texas, down south. And when they travel as well, up, uh, well, up throughout the United States, they actually have been putting on tremendous shows in these last two years. So big shout out to Fury FC. A lot of great prospects in the UFC have been coming out of this promotion recently as well. Hey, what's up, MMA? Uh, Retard. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, all of Afghanistan joined to, to support their boy. Cameron Church was robbed today, though. Was that on the prelims? I, I only had the prelims on in the background. You know what's great for a sore throat? Uh-oh. What's that? Uh, but I tried a 125 milligram CBD and 25 milligram THC lemon lime seltzer. And I was here relaxed. I don't remember falling asleep. Hey, I'm glad you like the seltzers, guys. Uh, for those Minnesota locals, you can check out the Smazy from Lupulin Brewing. <clears throat> it does wonders. It does wonders. Ah, yes, ah, yes. <laughs> no, it was just during the Muay Thai show earlier that Jim was. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I was listening to it as I was working out in the morning. Anyways, not a lot going on in this fight, guys, or else I'd be giving you like the. the the intense live play-by-play. -play. A lot of clinch work here. But Dodd has been the one controlling Slate Passmore for pretty much three minutes up against the cage. Landing some good knees to the body, and finally he gets the takedown. Getting the takedown and puts his knee right on the left leg of Passmore. Trying to pass, but Passmore gets right back up to his feet. 
you need space for one comic and you owe him money for it, by the way. Isha, what the heck? <laughs> Hockey, come on. Were you going to do that to me right away? I'm not even going to entertain that. Now I'm being charged for things that I didn't even ask for. Jeez, Hockey from home. Come on now. Uh, he was the guy who fought a uh, lion and had his earlobe ripped off. Dude, the American should have won. The American should have won. I, I I do believe he was robbed as well. Sorry, I didn't I didn't uh, put two and two together off the top of my head because there's just been so much mixed martial arts going on. And I thought you were talking about Fury, but yes, the American fighting the tie there this morning on Senshai's uh, Senshai's card, which Senshai getting another win again. That's awesome. Um, absolute robbery. He should have knocked. I mean, he should have been credited with a knockdown a couple times there. And the ref separates them now. Unfortunately, when Slate Passmore was in the dominant position. Ref finally separates him. 23 seconds on the clock. And a nice left and a right by Slate Passmore. He gets the double underhooks right back out of 15 seconds left in this first round. Hey, what's up, King James? Good to see you, my man. Phony was in Fury Prelims chat being a menace, but I enjoyed it. I don't I, I love all the support Phony shows the channel, man, but I just don't understand how that guy even, even puts himself through this. He clearly hates mixed martial arts. I don't know why he doesn't just watch more. I don't know why he wasn't in uh, Jay's chat this morning watching Muay Thai. It, it, it really makes zero sense. Love phony. Love the sporty shows, the channel as always. And But uh, I'll be vocal with him or with him outside of the chat. I, I do not understand people who go to SeaWorld front row and expect not to get wet. Um, King James, how's your weekend going, buddy? Uh, end of the first round, by the way, guys. Second round coming up here in a moment. Yeah, no, I didn't hockey from home. Not like I don't want. I'm already a little bit, you know, irked based on the beginning of the stream. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even gonna. No, you you painted it that you're sending us this care package, okay? And then you're gonna include a comic book in it. I did not. Uh, and and now you're making me look like the the bad guy here, right? You're making me look like the bad guy here. I will support Alpha Zeta when I when I'm ready to buy some of his comic books. Don't like, don't. Anyways, what what are we even talking about? Let's just talk about fights. This, this is absolutely crazy. Sorry, Alphazetta. I ain't being. I ain't giving you any money right now. I will buy your comic books at a later day. Hockey from home is trying to swindle money from me. It's not happening. Round two. Let's get it all. Craziness, craziness. Hockey, just wait. I'll buy it on my own accord some other time. You know, four minutes and fifty seconds on the clock here, and looking for the takedown is pass more. I was surprised we had two Americans on the court. Yeah, usually there's not many. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice again, guys. Better than this morning without a voice. But uh, yeah, I was surprised uh, that there were a couple Americans on that show. Yeah, church at three knockdowns not counted. Absolutely insane. I've uh, somehow found a stream for fear. Thank God I really need to buy Fight Pass. Yes, everybody should buy UFC Fight Pass. Cancel your Netflix. Buy Fight Pass. It's the Netflix of fights. Four minutes and 23 seconds on the clock. And again, don't, left underhook here by Dallas Dodd. By the way, big shout out to uh, to Jay Smooth, Chris Cushman, and the, and the gang there at MMA Holes. As well as uh, Main Card Minute, who were streaming the fights last night, holding down the fort here. Appreciate you guys. It's more fun to watch when it's not aimed at you. <laughs> and, ooh, a nice reversal there. Is Dallas Dodds gets Slatemore to the ground. Look to get his back, but Slatemore uh, decides to lay back on the ground. Now in modified half guard side control. And again, uh, Hockey from I know your intentions are good, but like you, you can't just like force people to buy stuff, you know? And now I look like the bad guy because obviously I want to support Alpha Zeta, but like I, I didn't sign up to buy anything right now. Oh, big elbows by Dallas Dodd. And one of them hit the back of the head of Passmore. The ref was on him, warning him right away. It looks like Passmore might be cut. I can't see. Yet. Oh, no, just, just some welt, just some welt. Uh, UFC has to cut Rose. She is done. What have, been, what have I been saying, buddy? What have I been saying? Thank you so much for joining my man. Saludos. What's up, Ganscow? Good to see you. You, you just, uh, you, oh, he is bleeding. He is bleeding above his left eye. You just took me by surprise. Or how you're like, oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay him money. I'm like, what? Full mount here. Full mount by Dallas Dodd. Full mount by Dallas Dodd here. Two minutes and 50 seconds to work. He's got a lot of time to work. Trying to move to his left here. His pastor. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my goodness, big right hands, big right hands, pushing his face to the ground, landing big elbows. He's cut on the top of his forehead. This is it, bro. This is it. He is, 
He's trying to scramble. He's trying to scramble. Passmore has heart. Passmore has heart, but Dallas Dodd landing some massive shots. Just, oh, it's so savage when you're in full mountain. You just push their head to the canvas and land those massive shots. This is a one-way traffic beatdown. This is a one-way traffic beatdown. And Passmore doing everything he can to cover up and turn, but it is all over. It is all over. Like, what an incredible finish. What an incredible finish. For Dallas Dodd in his pro MMA debut, he gets the TKO in the second round in the most savage way possible. Riding a four-fight win streak right now, including amateur and pro. And unfortunately for Slate Passmore, still, on, uh, still no wins as a pro in mixed martial arts. Oh my goodness, what a way to start off this card, ladies and gentlemen. What a way to start off this card. <laughs> I'm struggling, folks. Like I said, I woke up this morning and, you know, did one of those, like, like yawn, but like, oh, and I did that and nothing, like, no sound came out. And I was like, oh. so like I run to the mirror and like start talking and like nothing's coming out. And I was like, oh, no, I lost my voice. I lost my voice from all the streams this week and from going to the NCHC hockey finals last night. They, the NCHC uh, NCAA hockey finals last night in St. Paul. And uh, yeah, all that screaming, all that drinking. I think me definitely smoked half a half a big stogie, and uh, and my voice was just done. The body was like no. So I've been actually nursing it all day in preparation to do this. So that's why when there was no sound at the beginning, I was like, oh the irony, ladies and gentlemen, oh the freaking irony. Anyways, big shout out to everyone in the live chat here. Appreciate you guys. Smash that like button and subscribe. Next, Netflix is becoming the Netflix of fights with Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. Dude, Shane, go for a comment of the night. Go for a comment of the night. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm behind on some of the comments. Um... Uh, what's up, Roman? Good to see you, buddy. Thank you so much for all the support you show on this channel. Swindled by the short bus shorties. It's all good. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not upset with you, Hog. I'm just like, there's a lot to handle there in this first, like, 50 minutes of the stream. Technical issues, crazy fights, and apparently I'm buying comic books now. Gans Cow, great to see you, buddy. How was your karate combat, uh, like, literal watch party? As you said, you had the, you and, you and your friends were hanging out watching that. Just got back from the homestead where I follow without the ability to chat. I'm always tuned in though. King James, you're the man. I know you always uh, show support, my man. And that's so cool that you have that, that you have that homestead. You have that escape from the hustle bustle. I had fight pass when I had a job in Wi-Fi, but Stephen Warren was from Chicago. I mean, you don't have to do that either, hockey. Like that's what I'm saying. I, I don't, you're painting me as the bad guy here. Why do I have to be the bad guy? I love Alphazetta. I support his work. And I personally, you don't have to, I personally will pay him for his stuff eventually. It's just not going to happen right now. If you get Netflix for fight, you need a brain skin. Respect that Rose performance. She was good people just hating. She's good people, but I never want to see her uh, fight in MMA ever again. The reversals was slick by Rose. I did watch the fight. I did watch the fight. And I did have her winning. I know a lot of people online were like, oh, she didn't win that fight. Rebus was swinging at air. You're swinging at air, Ran. Rebus was swinging at air the whole time. And I mean, let's be honest. Rebus is the worst fighter. And we all knew that going in. I just am not a fan of Rose Namunas at all. So that, that's A, the bit. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Far from the fighter that beat Wei Lee. Yeah, the top 10 women's flyweight should be cut immediately. Come on, let's be reasonable. No, we just should force him to fight at Adam weight. And then bring in a bunch of Japanese chicks with knockout power from deep. Let's go. Did you guys see that knockout? Do you guys see that knockout in deep jewels uh, early this morning? Unbelievable. Where was one of the few women's MMA fighters worth watching? She turned into Thug Froze. Oh my God, you might have just, you just took comments of the night from Shane. You just took comments of the night from Shane. If I wasn't boring at all. There's some good scrambles. There's some, some good scrambles. Yeah, the member game in effect in every Rose fight. Now she can't live down the Carla fight. Hey, what's up, Idaho? It just started, buddy. It just started. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more fights, my man. And again, guys, sorry about my voice. It might, it might, I might have to go full ASMR issue by the end of this. But uh, we riding, we riding. 
Also, good to see you got your voice back, dude. No joke. I was like all day doing uh like warming it up. I've been drinking tea. I've been drinking honey water. And I do have a hockey podcast that I'm recording right after this stream as well. So like I kind of needed it. It might go after this. Who knows? Uh, but I was doing like vocal training. I have this like rice bag that I was like putting on my like friggin throat and neck all warmed up. You know, it's it's been a day. But hey, that's what you get for streaming like 30 plus hours throughout the week. And then going to the NCHC, NCAA tournament, which by the way, anyone from Colorado, Denver is your NCHC division championship. They put on an amazing game. Rieger Lorenz for the Minnesota Wild. He's a prospect. He was unbelievable. And uh, some of those other NHL draft eligible prospects were awesome as well. All right, we got Drake. Oh, whoops, this is not even the fight. Of course, the bow order is wrong on Tapology, but that's okay. We got Drake Lopez against Mason Iasobeles. All right, let me update the ticker on the bottom of the screen, and we'll get right back to it. Again, get your comments in the live chat, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely love interacting with you. If I missed any of your comments, don't worry. Just comment them again, and I'll get right to them. What a great crowd here for Fury FC on a Sunday. That is amazing. You guys really are the hardcores, you guys really are the junkies, and I absolutely respect every single one of you. You brought a smile to my face today, guys. You, you brought a smile. You're bringing a smile to my face today. Okay, let's quickly highlight these fighters. We got Big Daddy Mace. Big Daddy Mace, I can tell he's based. <laughs> Nathan, three and two is a pro. Three, <laughs> yeah, three and two in his last five fights on the two fight win streak. Um, he's at a team quest. I haven't seen, I haven't seen the team quest poster in a long time, guys. Um, he beat a three and two guy in his last fight in Combate global, got a first round knockout in his last fury fight and won his pro debut via KOTKO. He went seven and three as an amateur looking at his opponent, Drake Lopez. Ooh, zero and three as a pro three, one and one in his last five fights. Oh, 0 3 and 1 in Fury. Yeah, he doesn't have a win as a pro. And he's been dis he was disqualified in his last fight. Got knocked out in the fight before. I don't know why no contest heel hook. I don't know. And then lost an arm. Oh, he just getting finished left, right, and center. Yeah, we're going with Big Daddy Mace here, baby. We're going with Big Daddy Mace. Let me know your picks in the live chat. Speaking of the live chat, let's get back to it here. Let's get back to it here. I think that last fight was the first fight on the main card. They were meant to be on the prelims, but got moved up. Yes, sir. I And you know what? I said that when I was muted or when my mic, whatever, wasn't working. Bucky Luque's a deaf banger guaranteed blood. I went to the boxing gym and it's pretty good. Nice, dude. You got some training in today? I'm looking forward to Buckley and Luque next week. Did the prelims just end? Yes, the prelims just ended. Now it's on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, she's UFC caliber because she had power and chin. I think Rose movement just... League's better and won her fight. Hey, what's up, MMA Locksmith? Good to see you again. Give me Borrego. MMA Locksmith always joins us for Fury. Shane Swiggin Mason as well. Locking in. See you later, Hog and Rome. Thank you so much for the support. Rebus does everything except finishing her opponent. She plays tennis with fighters, but can't put them away. She isn't ready for UFC, not even in Victia. Well, I disagree on that. I think she's she could she could fight lower level UFC competition that are hittable. Anyways, round one, ladies and gentlemen. But you know. Everyone keeps saying, oh, you're not ready for the UFC. I mean, look, it's the women's division, man. With the women's most, other than what, like the top three in every division in the UFC? Bro, you, you plop any of the, those women in like rising for a fight at, at 110 or or 125 or 105, 115 or 125. And like they put on, oh, they put on a good show as well. Beautiful knee by Drake Lopez as Mason takes him to the ground. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I just think that applies more to the men's division. Oh, an arm bar, and it is all over. It is all over just as fast as it started, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was absolutely insane, ladies and gentlemen. That happened so quickly. Did the arm bar. God, show us a replay. Show us a replay, bro. That was unbelievable. That was unbelievable. I'm just, I'm just going to just talk right through it again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to talk right through it again here. Drake Lopez goes for the takedown. This is 10. I'm just, I just rewound it. We're just going to go through it all here because it happened so quickly. Drake Lopez going for the takedown. 
Mason with a knee in the clinch. Knee by Drake Lopez. Mason takes him to the ground. Mason in the top position. And look at this slick, slick armbar here. Mason throws the right. Drake grabs it and it's all over. Beautiful. And Drake Lopez gets his first pro mixed martial arts win in beautiful fashion, ladies and gentlemen. That was a thing of beauty. Nice armbar. I saw that, man. What are your guys' thoughts on that? For me, it's just so sad. It's just so sad to see Bigfoot continue to fight. I didn't even look up what happened. Please tell me he didn't get knocked out. Please tell me he didn't get knocked out. Man, it's so sad to see Bigfoot still fighting. And, like, I get it. Like, it's it's his job, and we shouldn't, like, tell someone that they can't work anymore. But I wish his inner circle, like, helped set him up for life a little bit better or, like, 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 why isn't he, like, teaching at a gym? You know, or something like that, man. Like, he's going to have such a poor quality of life. Oh, it's it's really, t like, you know, in no less than, like, five or ten years. Like, man, it's, it's very sad to see what's going on with Bigfoot Silva. At least he didn't lose again. Skate. Uh, Mason was a minus 800. Oh, it ended in a draw. Okay, that's better. That's better, I guess. Oh, I was scared for a second, man. Yeah, I was sparring, hitting pads. Atta boy, man. Get Getting that work in on a Sunday, I love it. I love it. Oluke going to shoot. I guarantee that he's a, that he a brawler, but he's also a pretty smart MMA fighter all around. Quick indeed. Damn, it's over. In women's MMA, you hold on to any viable talent. 100% denial. Buckley leaves everything in there. Just depends if Luke will try to sub. I literally got prime video for fights, one championship. See, Shane is Shane is a junkie just like us. Shane is a junkie just like us. Luke is tough out. Got the stream of Let's Go, Idaho. Buckley KOs Luke. I think that last fight was the first fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're caught up now. We're caught up. Gigantism. Giga Chadism. Uh, he had to have had bad management in his younger years. Oh, for sure. He's got no other make money, man. He's just trying to survive. No, that, that's what I said. That's what I said. It just sucks that like it wasn't set up. That he, that he wasn't set up. He, even like working within a gym, right? I mean, everything that Cain Velasquez had to deal with legally aside, like I don't know, he was champion, but so was Bigfoot. He was able to get some wrestling opportunities when his, you know, when he was too banged up and literally held held together by glue to fight and now he works in his gym at aka still it's like it, it just really sucks that bigfoot can't or, or or wasn't set up to do that and i always liked him that's why i, I always rooted for him and it's just it's just tough because he, he was so much fun to watch in the ufc former champion or interim champion i forget but regardless but yeah, and that and that's why i wanted to say that denial as well Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, D. Him and Tony Ferg still undefeated this year. That's the real stat. Dana Scheidt doing the post-fight interviews. <laughs> Dana White, wish version of Dana White. By the way, big big shout to Alex Morono, man. Big shout to Alex Morono, doing a great job on the Fury broadcast. I feel like he's getting better every single week. And he's always got a, a really nice suit jacket, a nice dress shirt, and then he rocks them jeans, man. He rocks them jeans. I love it. I love it. UC needs retirement plans for fighters so, or something. And, and I wish there was some, uh, I don't think the fight, like a fighter's union is like, is, is necessary. It wouldn't necessarily work, but there, there needs to be like some little, some, some, even just to help with like medicals. Uh, we boycotted crowdless warehouse fights last night. Instead, we enjoyed some karate combat. I love it, dude. I love it. Shane. He's picking Shane Keefe. <laughs> All right, let's highlight these next two fighters, guys. And again, thank you guys so much for joining us here on a Sunday. I mean, this is this is Fury FC, right? This is a lower level regional show that uh, that only the hardcores who like you know who pay for Fight Pass and who are part of the City Life family tend to watch. So I really respect you guys. I really appreciate you guys. It's been uh, it's been a busy week. You know, I didn't do UFC last night. Took a break to just go and. Stay away from a screen and go watch some live sports with a buddy. Got my ass kicked in pull tabs. I think I sunk 60 bucks in the pull tabs. Gone. But hey, that's that's gambling for you. That's gambling. 
for someone who hosts so much MMA, I, I, I won a little money on the Afghan boy on Octagon yesterday. So, so there you go. There you go. And shout out to friggin' 750 Afghanis who joined the live chat to watch their boy yesterday. That was amazing. That was amazing. Um, Ron was like an MMA teacher on the mic. He has so much knowledge and understands it all and is able to pro project it to the people via spoken word, which is an art in itself, in my opinion. Dude, yeah, he's one of my favorites. He's one of my favorites. And I, and I hope that maybe this leads to a UFC gig down the road. I always love watching Rono fight too. I think he's one of the one of the better fighters outside of the top fifteen. I don't think you'll ever be like a staple in top fifteen. Kind of like, <laughs> kind of like Li Jing Liang is kind of always around that like seventeen to fifteen. I mean, Alex Morono is respectfully, uh, he's just very very talented. And we'll kind of always hang around there as well. But whenever he fights, I'm watching. Even when he loses, they're fun fights. Hey, what's up, Tommy? Good to see you. Boycott the Apex. Hey, I was boycotting the Apex to watch some NCHC finals. Let's go, baby. Although, damn, Peyton Talbot is a problem. Peyton Talbot is a problem. I do think those two will fight again someday. I do think those two will fight again someday. Apex is a profitable show for them. They won't get rid of it. It's something created out of necessity, and they milking it to the end. No, I, and, I, and I totally get it, and I totally get it. And, and sometimes they put really good cards on the Apex. Just last night, some fights delivered. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, vote in the poll question, by the way. Very UFC-related. And, and and the poll question was uh, was made for the hardcores of this channel, too, because there's some inside jokes there as well. I mean, inside, but, you know. We'll say, like, door-cracked inside jokes. Not not quite inside the corridors, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I had a bad analogy for that one. I uh, highly recommend going to live fights at the Apex. Yeah, I heard it's it's a, it's a tough ticket to get. I highly recommend going to like LFA, Cage Fury FC, or Fury FC as well at a casino show to get that old like UFC vibe, man. That old like Mandalay Bay, uh, oh fuck sakes, that old old Mandalay Bay vibe. Oh, dude, I was sweating so much when that then the stream started. You guys couldn't hear me. Oh my god. I'd rather watch B leagues with the crowd over the apex. Um, I'm gonna also go with Shane Keefe as well. Sorry, the chat's been so buzzing. I didn't have time, and with this pacing, I didn't have time to highlight them. We will in between rounds. If we get there, beautiful takedown by Shane Keefe on Michael Murphy. Michael Murphy holding the right arm of Keefe. Still holding that left arm, working in that modified half guard side control right now is Keefe. Working from the bottom here. Good defense. Good defense trapping the arms from the bottom, even, even in that half guard. Now looking to posture up is Murphy, but Keefe's... So trying to stand up is Murphy here, but Keefe now be, is looking to attack the neck. Is this, is this, a, is this proving necktie? What the heck is this submission? Ganskow, you're the, you're the jiu-jitsu guy. Oh my goodness, and he got out of it. The broadcast was saying Japanese necktie. And I was like, no, that's not the Peruvian one. His leg wasn't in there. And it was good reversal by Michael Murphy. And that was a, that was an interesting submission a, a, attempt there by Shane Keefe. Oh, man, that was close. Wasn't tight, though. Yes, okay, that was the Peruvian. Okay, I got confused there. That was nice. That was nice. Hard Rock Casino vibes. Absolutely, dude. And uh, April 5th, I'm... I'm Planning to go to LFA here in uh, Mystic. Oh, looking for a triangle. Looking for a triangle from the bottom of Shane Keefe. He's looking to tighten it up. He's looking to tighten it up. A big hammer fist from the top position by Michael Murphy. I mean, that's one way to try to defend this is just slam the fist into your opponent's face. It's not super tight as he's leaning forward into the cage, and it's all over. It's all over. He taps. Just when I said it wasn't tight, he tapped. He tapped. I didn't get anything about Shane Keefe. I guess they said. I thought it was Keefe. Shane Keith gets the gets the quick submission. I'd rather watch the B leagues with crowds over the apex. Dana White last night. That's not what I mean when I said I wanted hungry fighters. I love it. I love it. That shit's wild, man. But he went full like Hannibal the Cannibal. Good on the UFC for cutting him right away, though. Honestly, there isn't another foul I've seen that's up there. 
Pinching the Adam's apple, it was in Game Bread FC, could have caused permanent damage to the opponent's to the opponent's voice box. Wow, I never saw that one, but that's that's pretty hard. That's like pretty old school UFC Savage. Peruvian is sitting in the Japanese is laying on the side, right? Oh, actually, I don't know the answer to that question. You can tell I'm still a white belt in jujitsu. <laughs> Let's go. Misha Kir, uh, Sirkunov hit the proven necktie in the UFC. How many of them have been hit in the UFC? I know there's been, what, three, three twisters? Um... Two of them coming like in the last two, three years too. It was Bryce Mitchell had one and then, um, oh shoot, that, I forget his name, but it was like a few months ago. Minus 140 was nice. Uh, Keith, he trained at AK for a while now and he's the better striker. Hey, Tommy Anders, correct. I think it's two. Well, because you no, know, Korean zombie... Bryce Mitchell, or for the for the twister, and then there was that guy who landed. Oh, I forget. I, I feel bad forgetting his name, but okay. So two in the UFC for proving necktie. Cool. Hey, I love this interview by Shane uh, Keith. He's like, "Hey, man, I come here to put people to sleep." Yeah, no, big shout out to Tommy Unders. Like I said, I, especially on the Octagon stream and Rising stream, I always learn something from you guys uh, as well here. Yeah, two two for the Peruvian necktie, three for the twisters. How cool is it that like two out of those three twisters came like you know recently in like the modern era, which is cool to see. And zombie got it on. Don't tell me, don't tell me. It was was it Efren Escudero who he got the was it Efren Escudero who he got the Peruvian necktie on? Zombie Mitchell Blackshear, Demon Blackshear. Yes, that's who it was. Blackshear got the twister violent one too. Yeah, yeah. Did he, did he not take that fight on short notice? Or did he take a fight on short notice after? I think he took a fight on short notice after and lost, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, dude, that was sick. That was such a fun fight. That was such a fun fight. Speaking of fun fights, we've got a few fun fights already on this card, ladies and gentlemen. Big shout out to all of you who are joining. And uh, Damon was fighting back-to-back -back cards. Badass dude. Yeah, dude, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him now. He's made a fan out of me, even though I forgot his name. Jeez. Jordan was against Bautista after. That's what it was, yep. And he looked good in the first round, too. He just got tired. He just got tired, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Oh, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. For those in the in Houston, um, April 21st, April 28th, and May 12th. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, Fury FC on April 21st. April Fury, or, uh, Fury FC 89. And then, I don't know, what what's S... HP 90 and then Fury FC 90. What's it? SHP again. Strike Hard Productions. We haven't, I haven't done a stream for that, but okay. So April 21st, for those in the Houston, Texas area, April 21st, April 28th, and what did it say? May 12th or May 14th. You got a little Fury and other local MMA. Arguably got robbed as well. All right, we got Gabe Massario coming up next. What up? What a case. Good to see you as well, buddy. Big shout out to What a Case who was in that crazy chat of ours during the Octagon stream. Guys, I did not expect that Octagon stream. Usually Octagon, we get about like a thousand to like, you know, 4,000 views. We get a crowd of like 30 to 60 at most. I did not expect seven freaking hundred Afghani supporters. I mean, we don't even get that many Afghani supporters when the, when the Bashrap bros fight. So that was super cool. Maybe maybe like the guru or those who stream uh, the, the bigger channels that may holes. Maybe they get all of Afghanistan in their freaking uh, chat for those. But yeah, that was crazy, man. That was crazy. <laughs> that was insane. So that that's happened a few times. So we've we've had a few streams where like all of Thailand, all of Japan, all of India, and and the latest now all of Afghanistan uh, join us, and it gets wild. I think the 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 highest live viewer count we've had was like. 1400 i want to say 14 or 1500 and that was for a one championship numbered card in 2021 did freddy fight yet you have to be more specific than that bro uh on the main card freddy has not fought yet buddy freddy has not fought yet 
So I didn't know if you were asking about uh, the prelims as I was, I was only keeping like one eye on the prelims as I was getting some stuff here today, but no, Freddie has not fought yet, buddy. And thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you, uh, Chad. Octagon, uh, any other small promotion over any other small promotion in my opinion, dude, it's growing at an astronomical rate as well. CB dollar is the other Peruvian necktie and the Pat Karan had a good one in Bellator. CB Dalloway, man. Um, Ultimate Fighter veteran. That was uh, the Forrest Griffin and Rampage season. I think he was one of the only Rampage fighters to make it. Um, and he was, and, and he lost actually in the semifinals, but that, because uh, Jesse Taylor got kicked out of the show. Who Jesse Taylor's still fighting, by the way. He fought in that Canadian promotion, BFL, last year. Um, he was uh, He was put in as a... As an alternate and ended up getting in. What's up, Charles? Charles, I know I still owe you a video, buddy. I'm working on it. I'm working. I lost my voice earlier this morning, so I couldn't get us. I, I had to focus on some other things, but I'm working on it, dude. Trust me. You'll be the first person I, I link or I send the link to. I promise you that. But uh, how's it going, Charles? It's good to see you, man. Dude, Charles, how crazy is it? We might see a Stanley. Like, if if Vancouver can get out of the West, we might see a Vancouver New York finals again. Let's just hope that Vancouver doesn't burn their fucking city to the ground. Let's be honest. They will. They will. You see the news that Octagon put out recently? Uh, they break in records. Isn't it like a 60,000 seater arena that they're going to be uh, fighting in? CB Dalloway has just always been around. That's true. That's true. Uh, Shane is picking Loram uh, Estevez. I was at the Jesse Taylor fight. Rebel tapped him quick. Yeah, dude, that's so cool, Tommy. That's so cool. I want to go to a BFL event so bad. Um, we our channel actually at, might actually partner with them for an event and actually do some like video work for them down the road. Uh, the fighting in Frankfurt uh, FC Stadium, uh, a German football team stadium, sitting fifty five thousand people. Dude, Octagon's doing amazing. They already sell out thirty thousand, and they're a regional. Octagon's amazing. <laughs> Dude, I just like I, I didn't want to half-ass it. And like I said, it, it, YouTube fucked me with some stuff, and I wanted to add a little bit extra to it. I've just been so busy this weekend. I actually went to the NCHC finals last night and uh, and saw Denver beat Omaha. It was such a fun game at the XL Energy Center. But yeah, I'm excited to put out that video too. Something a little different on the channel, and uh, and I know you will appreciate it more more than anybody. So thank you for your patience, man. Thank. You. I know I teased it earlier, and I just have a lot going on, and you know it was just further down the priority list is all but uh very excited to share with you and i'm excited to get your notes and critiques as well you having a live hockey stream after this if so send me a link for it uh i'm not doing a live hockey stream I'm, I'm recording a podcast but i will send you the link to the video as i just uh i have to film a beer review tonight as well that's not 55,000. i know all right gabriel masario or gabriel masario ladies and gentlemen eight and eight as a pro he is two and three in his last five fights. Looking to get above 500 here is the 30 year old. Uh, fight is about to begin here. So give me one sec to update the ticker on the screen. All right, round one. I'm just going to quickly run the rest of these. Just run him down here. Uh, six KO, two KO, zero submissions, two decisions. So he likes to knock out his opponents. Three and six in Fury, three and oh in. CT. Um, his most notable win is against a six and five guy. Other than that, he's just been knocking out those with not the best records. He did get a split decision in his last, or he lost a close split decision in his last fight. Oh, nice left by Estevez. Speaking of Loram Estevez, seven and two is a pro, four and one in his last five fights, 29 years of age, also from Brazil. Um, Nick Maxson, I see you in the lobby. Wrong stream, buddy. Wrong stream. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Uh, I mean, unless Nick Maxson wants to, is watching Fury FC, then you can jump on uh, and, and ride ride the shotgun as well, my man. Five and one as a pro in Fury FC. Uh, 18 and 10. Uh, a guy who uses my StreamYard account for uh, hockey stuff uh, popped in the wrong room here, so I saw him in the lobby. That's hilarious. Love you, Max. Um, he beat an 18 and 10 guy via guillotine choke in his last fight, five and five before then, unanimous decision. Lost to 10 and six guy. Really, you know what? 
hasn't taken that big step up in competition that we want to see yet against Ivy. I guess Ivy was that pick or was that opponent, but obviously didn't work out for him. Uh, you know what, Shane? I'll go against the grain. I will go against you on this one. I'll go with uh, Masario. Locking it in. All right, let's turn our attention back to fight. That was so funny. Hey, what's up, HM? Thank you for all the support that you've shown this weekend as well, dude. Really, uh, really appreciate it, man. Oh, a nice counter left by Estevez. Three minutes on the clock. Oh, a nice body kick by Estevez. Oh! Counter left by Estevez, and he drops Masario, and he drops Masario. Oh, my voice is definitely going to go after this again. <clears throat> drops him with the left. HM, how's the rest of your weekend going, buddy? Oh, my goodness, in the full guard right now. His Loram Estevez. Masario. Still seeing the Tweety Birds, I imagine. The broadcast said that, hey, don't grab the cage. Don't grab the cage. Good job of the ref. Slapping them fingers from Masio, or Masario. The, the broadcast was saying that Gabe Masario is a very slick grappler. We got uh, Brazil up against Brazil here. On his feet right now is Esteban. Now he re-enters the guard. Two minutes on the clock. Sorry, has no head movement. Just stand up and drop him again. One minute and 46 seconds on the clock. Ooh, a nice left. By, Mas or by Estevez. Carlos Felipe versus Tony Johnson on Friday for ACA. Dude, I will most likely be doing that. Because it's in the morning. I think I'm going to go to LFA at night. So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely be doing that. I'll definitely be doing that. Oh, a nice left by Estevez. Doing some damage here in the ground and pound. Nice left by Estevez. I guess he's just confident right now that since he's not, he, he didn't take him down in open water, i.e. center of the mat, that he can just push his shoulders up against the cage, continue to posture up, Ooh, nice, nice pass into the half guard there and just beat him up versus not have the cage around where he can push him into. And that naturally making it harder for Masario to threaten him with some submissions. But yes, his striking was just levels above. Who do I have in the main tonight? Dude, that's such a good question. That's such a good question. Both of them are so good. Zach Borrego, one of the better guys on the regional scene right now. I mean, even Topology has it as, as a straight-up pick -em. Brego, his last two fights, beautiful, beautiful knockouts, mind you, against, you know, lesser competition, but that is the regional scene. And Jordan Wright, the Beverly Hills Ninja, right? Former UFC fighter. Mm. I, uh, I, I'm going with Brego on this one. I'm going with Brego on this one. I think he's hungry. I don't think he takes a literal bite out of Jordan Wright, but I think he's hungry. Yeah, driving to the head into the cage is preventing dude's bottom game. And that is it for the first round. Banger main event. That's what I'm saying. This, our, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I, definitely in the last two years, I think this is the most highly anticipated main event in a, in a promotion like Fury, right? Up and coming prospect who's making some noise. And even in the fights that he loses, like it, it is fun to watch in Borrego. You know, versus a, versus a veteran in the UFC, a veteran of the UFC who's only 32 years of age trying to crawl his way back. New meaning to a hungry fighter after last night. Oh my God, I know. It's like, it's almost just going to be like a meme at this point. Uh, let's check in on the poll question right now, guys. Let's check in on the poll question. Speaking of hungry fighters, speaking of hungry fighters. Let's take a look at the poll question here. Round two is coming up, guys. Round two is coming up. Uh, guys, let's try to get to 25 likes on the video. If you guys haven't smashed that like button, please do so. Please do so. Really appreciate it. All right. Um, worst foul in MMA. <laughs> Cage grab, biting opponent's flesh, 
Grab the dick and twist it. John Jones uh, special, the eye poke. 37% say grab the dick and twist it. 29% saying biting an opponent's flesh. 20% saying grabbing the cage. And 15% say the eye poke. Guys, smash that like button. Some mesh, some mesh, some mesh. Really appreciate you guys. People are lower on Brego because of that Bo Nickel fight. He's a dog. Oh, yeah, dude. He's a dog. He's a dog. He's very, very good. All right, round two. Let's get it all. Some feints from Estevez. Estevez looking for that counter left again. That kid is only 20. Might be able to get back in it uh, with a few years' time and at least join PFL Bellator. Absolutely. Yeah, he's wicked talented. And I think we're going to see that on display tonight. But a great step up in competition on the regional scene going up against, you know, a former UFC guy. I mean, like, what is this, Ryzen? <laughs> That's like some Ryzen matchmaking up uh, up in this mouth. Hey, thank you for writing in um, your answer as well. John Jones, because bro just keeps getting away with blinding opponents and then being called the GOAT. I like it. I like it. The best, the best American fighter of all time is Demetrius Johnson. Solid hooks there by Estevez. Osario landed a couple of his own. Osario steps in with the left. Osario keeping that right hand high, as he should, because that counter left by Estevez dropped him in the first round. I'm talking about the guy biting in the UFC. Oh, I thought you were talking about friggin' uh, Borrego. Um, but yeah, cause he won on contender series and put on a, a tremendous performance. And I remember I was actually excited to see him, uh, fight did not expect it to go down the way, uh, the way it did, but yeah, I mean, I'm shoot, man, it's, he, he's got options. He's got options. I mean, Russia doesn't care if you bite someone. I mean, I'm sure ACB will probably give him a call. <laughs> nice right to the body by Estevez. Three minutes and 13 seconds on the clock. Oh my goodness. Great combo left, right. And a follow up left hook two to the body, one to the side of the head. On uh, Marsario. Yeah, it's, it's how old is it? Yeah, because he's 27. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Uh, his corner was trying to make excuses for the bite as well. That's crazy. That's crazy. Two minutes and 44 seconds. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch that one live. I was at the the hockey game last night, but uh, I, re I I watched m most of the fights when I got back home. And then I then caught up on one championship. I literally didn't sleep again last night. I, I went to bed at like 6 a.m., I think, because I watched I watched all the UFC fights that I missed. I caught the last two at the bar downtown St. Paul. Nice right elbow by Masari on the break. And then came back home, watched the rest of them that I missed on the prelims and, and main card, and then I watched uh, all of uh, one Friday fights. So, yeah, it was a long night again. Body kick by Masario. Sorry with the right feint. Sorry with the left hook swing and a miss. Uh, that's what Lima gets for cheating. So Severino took it in his hands. Nate the Train next weekend. Let's go. The M1 legend, ladies and gentlemen. Nate the Train. And how did he get the mouthpiece out for the perfect bite? That's that's what's crazy. Like, you can't tell me that shit wasn't like, I, like heat of the moment, animalistic. Blah, blah, blah. Like, there's no excuse. Obviously, no one would make an excuse. But like, the, the mouthpiece was out because he chomped down both crown and lower. I hope UFC is seeing a drop in viewership for these Apex cards. Inside low kick by Masario. Outside low kick by Estevez. Step in left hook by Masario. One minute on the clock. I, I must say, I do like Masario's uh, tattoo he has there on his, on his left arm. That's pretty cool. Ooh, a nice straight right by Estevez. I was thinking about getting a tattoo. I don't have a tattoo yet. Ooh, catching the leg kick. Or catching the kick there was uh, Estevez. Tripped up Masario. Masario, though, threw a... Up kick that just grazed Estevez right back up to his feet. But think about me. If I get a tattoo, like, I'm not just going to get, like, one little tattoo. If I'm going to get a tattoo, I'm going to get, like, a fucking full sleeve from, like, my fingertip all the way, like, I'm going to go all out. Or get, like, my entire back done or something like that. Obviously not in one, set, one session because the shit costs a lot, but... So I'm going to go, like, all in if I do get one. So I've been, like, taking notes. I've been taking notes. I've been watching the new episode or the new season of... um. 
LA Inc. <laughs> as well. <laughs> 10 seconds on the clock. Looking for the takedown here with the body lock. Is Estevan's knee a good takedown defense by Masario and some knees landing there as well. Big hype for Nate the train. The Onama fight is one of my favorites, dude. He's so awesome. He's so awesome, Nate the train. I love how instead of taking the quote unquote easier route on the in the North American regional scene, he wanted to go right into the belly of the beast and fight in Russia in M1 when M1 was still like at its peak. M1 has since since fallen and ACB and ACA have kind of taken over as far as being the premier Russian promotions. But man, there was there was between like what 2000 like 8 and 2018 19 like M1 was legit man get a drunk dragon like poetan the talbot tattoo oh my god i like the um, i mean i don't i'm not this much of a weebo so i probably couldn't couldn't get you know couldn't allow myself to do but i do like the brian battle uh like dragon ball z shenron dragon on his back that one's pretty sick dude i'm gonna fight is what started all the james Krause gambling stuff you still on slow mode i i said it to slow mode after the octagon stream it's usually only three seconds but Maybe a default to five. I'll change it for the next stream. Four minutes and 36 seconds, by the way. We're in the third round. He has a great style and is low-key the best man on the mic. When DC said he's in, he's inside control and can do what he wants, so he proceeds to stand up and flex. <laughs> yeah, especially MMA for the brave uh, Bubba Jenkins uh, was their champ. Estevez up two round. Oh, two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, a nice left and a right and a right and a left by Estevez. Yeah, Estevez dominated the first round. Did get the better of Masario in the second, though Masario did have a better second round. Estevez is just outclassing him on the feet, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, a nice left and a right by Estevez. Estevez stepping in with the knee doesn't really land. Left and left of the body by Masario. Yeah, but Nate the Train went five and zero and M one and won the and won the belt there. Unbelievable. And he beat some legit guys. Thirteen and two, fourteen and three, ten and one, twenty one and eight, and sixteen and four. All absolute killers, and he knocked out three of them. Espes unloaded with some big shots here. Three minutes and thirteen seconds on the clock. They're still fighting. They're still fighting, buddy. Third round. Third round. Estevez is up two rounds, though. He dropped Masario in the first round, too, with a beautiful left hook. Two minutes and 55 seconds. Mama ain't raised no bitch, baby. Dude, he's so awesome. Oh, there's a nice left hook by Masario. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful shots there by Estevan. Estevez. Step in, left hook, double left hook by Masario, but Espez, good high guard. Espez now looking for the takedown, but Masario has good takedown defense. If there's one thing that we've learned in this fight, in regards to Gabe Masario, is his striking may not be the best, but he's he's got damn good take defense or takedown defense because the last couple times Espez has tried to take him to the ground, unable to do so. Espez got to the ground before because he dropped him in the first round. The only correct answer to the poll is an eye poke. Alabama over Dagestan. Exactly that. Exactly that. Beautiful slam takedown. That was a slam takedown. Oh my goodness. Huge takedown by Loran Mestevez. He's doing what he did in the first round to negate any submission attempts. He's trying to push the shoulders into the cage. Masaru Masaru tried to reverse, but... A little too strong there by Estevez as he pushes him right back into the cage. Some palm strikes to the side of Estevez's head by Gabe Masario. Absolutely. Feet planted again, pushing the shoulders and head into the cage is Laura, is Laura Estevez. 
Masario doesn't have room to work. He doesn't have room to scramble. And they're, they're good job by Masario trying to get a little bit closer into deep water here, i.e. center of the cage, outside the cage, so he can work and not have any of his movement hampered, restricted. One minute on the clock. He's hell merry, though. He needs a submission here. And this was a good game plan by Estevez late was, you know, take him down, secure the win. And show everyone who's watching UFC brass and all that, uh, that he's well-rounded 35 seconds on the clock. Cause yeah, I know he's going up against an eight and eight guy, 500 guy, but, uh, like flawless performance. And you know, he's seemingly going to win this fight. 30 seconds left. And a 8-2 record. Good striking. Strong on the ground. Oh, oh, oh. There's the triangle. Man, he tried to go for a triangle. Then reverse an arm bar quickly. But a good job by Estevez with the defense there. And pushes him right back into the guard. Final 10 seconds. No, I'm impressed. Again, I, I want to see uh, Estevez against a, a higher level prospect. Or like another guy um, at, at his level. But uh, these, these are the type of guys that, you know, we should keep our eye on because these are the type of guys who will get calls to contender series moving forward. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And it was all activated all day, beginning to end. Let's see if we're going to see the replay on him dropping him early. Oh, man, those combos, dude. Sh show us the knockdown, bro. Show us the knockdown. Oh, he's got good head movement too, eh? Yeah, man. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Sounds good, Shane. And if I don't see you again, Shane, uh, have a great rest of your night as this isn't going to be a long card, Shane. This isn't going to be a long card. Especially with the pacing, if we see more finishes, this will probably be done in, what, an hour and a half, I think? So hope to see you for the main card, buddy. But yeah, get your workout in. Shane Roman the faster. Working out on a Sunday. I absolutely love it. I have so much editing to do tonight for my soda pod. Uh, my second channel. Well, I guess my third channel now because officially Rush City is the second channel. As there's no finishing instinct, I know he didn't take any damage, but he also didn't try to finish him. I will be devil's advocate and say he wasn't getting too crazy in the top position on the ground there because the only threat his opponent had was his jujitsu. And uh, I mean, again, who knows how much of a threat that was, but that's what the broadcast was saying as far as um, pumping up the Brazilian. And how many submissions did he have again? Well, he didn't even have any submissions. So never mind. Never mind. I, uh, you're right. You're right. The striking was just so crisp, though, and he clearly has power in his striking. So um, that's I want to see him against some some higher level competition. I want to see him against a guy with some finishing instinct and see how he uh, see how he fares. All right, who do we got next here? Bout order is completely wrong on typology, so I'm just listening in to see. Yum yum beerly. Yum yum beerly. Oh, <laughs> this isn't a fighter. This is a Olivia Yum Yum Beerly one series amateur series, and she's gonna call someone out, maybe. Oh, she was supposed to fight tonight. That's why. This is the the girl's fight got canceled earlier. Bro looking clean with the dance moves and that hat. Dude, yeah, that's a good style. It's a good style. Hey, the, the Keith and SFS parlay hit. Let's go. Uh, yo, what's up in the granite? How are you, buddy? How have you been enjoying the fights this weekend? Hey, talk about another guy who puts in the work every single day in the granite. Atta boy. Anthony, I'd fight her. <laughs> They can't find fighters for her. Uh, 
So May 12th, they're looking to get her pro debut. <laughs> the longer y'all wait, the scarier I get. Yeah, Olivia Yum Yum Beerly. All right, let's check out her resume here. Dude, does Tapology really not have a... I guess Tapology doesn't even have anything on her. That's crazy. Anyways, next fight is your Freddy Rodriguez against Eddie, uh, Eddie Frere. These hands are equal opportunity. <laughs> Why isn't Dana signing this classy woman yet? Because she, has, she hasn't even made her pro debut. I see what like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I literally thought they were going to bring, bring, uh, and this isn't, this isn't me being, uh, this isn't me being racist. Okay. All right. <laughs> I thought, I thought based off the name and this is coming off covering Ryzen. Okay. I thought that it was going to be an Asian chick. I'm not going to lie. I was surprised to see that, that it was a blonde. It was a blonde beauty. Okay. Cause I, I hear yum yum. I think Korean chicken. Okay. Sue me. Uh, what's up? What's up, buddy? Good to see you, sis. Hungry for some more fights? <laughs> it's part of the only fans partnership. Of course, of course. By the way, Yum Yum's Korean chicken is the best Korean chicken on the planet. Or the best chicken on the planet. It's unbelievable. That sauce that they use, oh my goodness. Unbelievable. There's a... There's a, a Korean chicken joint that opened in my hometown and all they do is chicken. Like there's nothing else on the menu other than a chicken sandwich and just fucking yum yum chicken. And dude, they sell out. They sell out. Dude, the farms on Vancouver Island can't keep up with the demand for the yum yums. Reported band blocked. Oh, I, I don't have time, unfortunately. Um, I used to play GTA 5 online for self-care, which is a little fucked up, but it's, say, it's the way it is when I was building that media company back in 20, like 18 to 2021. Um, and uh, the only other games, like uh, when I go back home and hang out with my like my younger siblings, you know, we, we get nostalgic and we play like Mario Kart Double Dash, Super Smash Bros. Melee, whip out the old Super Nintendo and play like Super Mario World. The only modern game that I love and would play if I had time would be Counter-Strike. I, I, I think that's the greatest game ever, ever made. The fact that it's it's so much more than just a game that you can just kind of like blindly go into and just like play. It's like, no, you have to warm up or you're going to suck. Like when I played with the boys, we, we, we weren't allowed to play with play uh, against each other with each other, unless we warmed up for 30 minutes ahead of time. Like that's how hardcore that game is. And if you want to be successful, you have to be that hardcore man, the broadcasting for, for their, and again, this is going to sound nerdy, but like they counter strike, broadcast for their like esports is, is it's better than most professional sports the way that they commentate and and, and talk about that three lane strategy game it's incredible um and i think i have like two hundred dollars worth of skins that i won not a big deal still in my account but yeah i haven't played since uh global offense but i would love someday to uh to fire up cs2 what about you you guys game Taco nachos, but instead of normal chips, replacing them with spicy nacho Doritos. Ooh, should be fired. That sounds amazing. Mealy Bros, the shit, dude. So good. So good. Let's go. I've been playing this game called Fire Emblem. There's like 17 titles. I'm trying to beat every game. Game is so hard. It's a strategy. Uh, JRPG, nice. I'm an RPG guy if I'm going to play games myself. Usually, I oh, my tradition Every December during Christmas break, you know, when you have like a few days off work, or whatever, I play Pokemon Blue, and I just like I wipe my old uh, account and I, and I and I start over. It's just like a tradition. I've done that since I was eight years old, and I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Counter Strike is awesome, man. Uh, I have a racing sim. I just love to drive fast. It gives me my fix. Awesome. That's cool. That's so sick, dude. Um, I have a friend who who was who had that exact like whole setup. He had like a little office that was like a pod that he would like kind of sit in, kind of like an arcade, and it was so sick. 
That was his self-care. All right, Eddie Rodriguez, the comeback kid, ladies and gentlemen. Up against Eddie Ferrer, the comeback kid. Five and one as a pro. This is a really good matchup, guys. This is a really good matchup. Five and one as a pro. Won his last fight. We go round one, guys. Four KO TKOs, one decision. Up against Eddie Ferrer, who's five and three. Won his last fight, but also four and one in his last five. Three KO TKOs, zero submission, two decisions, five and two in fear. This is going to be a banger, guys. This is going to be a banger. Cannot wait for this one. I'm going to go high def Eddie Frere. That's my pick. Locking it in. Let's go, Freddy. Freddy versus Eddie. And look where the takedown there was a Freddy or was. Uh, yeah, Freddy Rodriguez or Eddie Rodriguez, I should say. Oh, Jesus. Eddie Frere. God damn. Now I'm getting mixed up with the Freddies and Eddies. And pushing Eddie up against the cage is a Freddy Rodriguez. Good job by Eddie Frere for getting out of that one. Straight left and a right by Rodriguez. I just got to start calling them by their last names there. <laughs> Are we all going to get confused? Outside low kick by Rodriguez. Three minutes and 52 seconds on the clock. Each of them have some power in their mitts. Inside leg kick by Eddie Rodriguez trying to return the favor. Swing and miss. Eddie can crack. Oh, there's the Eddie chance in the live in the live arena right now. Couple shots in the pocket there by Rodriguez. And Eddie gets out of it. You should have been having him eating carnitas, tacos, and drinking Aussie beer. That sounds amazing. Nice right hand by Eddie. Local kid. Let's go, Chad. We're rooting for him. Right and a left. And a low kick by Freddy Rodriguez. I think there's four more fights. Oh, a nice duck in right hand. By Eddie Frere. Or two more fights, sorry. Jeez. They've been going so fast. Can't keep up. Left and a right by Freddy Rodriguez. Eddie versus Freddy. So three more fights after this one. Two more fights after this one. Three more fights on the card is what I mean. Two minutes and 26 seconds on the clock. Freddy Rodriguez got some fast hands too, but Eddie Frere, great job with the high guard there. Nothing is really getting through. Two minutes and 21 seconds on the clock. Eddie can crack. Freddie Grappler. I used to drive a dirt race car in high school and have had that need for speed ever since. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, for me, my, my thing is like downhill mountain biking, but I've broken so many bones now and <laughs> I got to get health insurance in the States before I do that. In Canada, you break a bone, you walk into the hospital, you're good to go. And you got to wait like maybe five hours because Canada, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need to get some better health insurance out here or else I can't mountain bike anymore or, or, or until I start mountain biking again. I can get you an emulator, an emulator for any console for Nintendo. Oh, sounds good. I might take you up on that. I used to game PC games, but not much anymore. This was back in 01, 07. Yeah, back in the day, I used to play Diablo 2. That was my shit when I was a kid. Freddy Rodriguez pushing Eddie up against the cage. Trying to employ that body lock, but great takedown defense by Eddie Frere. Sounds brutal. Yeah, mountain biking is a it's a hell of a rush, dude. It's a hell of a rush. But like it's a sport where like you are going to break bones. Like, oh, on the break there. Beautiful left and right by Freddy Rodriguez. Yeah. It, the, I've never met anybody who's mountain biked who hasn't got concussed or, or broken at least four bones. It's uh it's all for that rush though. 55 seconds on the clock. You see that guy got his nose broken in the tie fight. Um, I was listening to Jay's stream, but I wasn't watching all the fights, so I don't think I saw that one. The ear was nasty, though. That, that American. I miss riding uh, downhill. I used to whip uh, Bergamont Big Air 9. I'm just looking, what, looking that up. I have a, I still have a Norco strike, man, that I just uh, upgraded a little bit. Two minutes and 22 seconds on the clock. 2006 Norco strike, but basically just 
uh, my ex girlfriend, who's a r really big mountain biker, and, and she still is. She uh, that was like a birthday present for me. She basically just re repaired it from the ground up. Not that it was like in in bad shape, but just like put all new parts on it, and oh, it's it's amazing. Sucks for riding up the hill because it's heavy as shit, but it's amazing going down. All right, end of the first round, guys. Very. Very close round. I do think Freddie Rodriguez has landed the better shot so far, but he's he's fighting at a very high pace, whereas Eddie's controlling his pace a little bit more and not allowing Freddie to take him to the ground. Paper Mont, Big Air, nine. Yeah, the Norco Strike, man, that's my baby. And then my, my road bike is a gravel road hybrid, uh, Gerbaldi 2. Oh, fuck, this is a nice bike. Dude, oh yeah, this is so sick. Yeah, this probably weighs as much as mine. This probably weighs as much as my 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 Norco. That's sick, dude. How did we not meet if you lived on Vancouver? You did jujitsu down to Mount Mike Hardcore MMA fan? <laughs> because I lived on Vancouver Island. That's why. Because I lived on Vancouver Island, Tommy. Yeah, how do we not connect? It's crazy. Hey, well, next time I'm there, buddy. Next time I'm there, beers on me. There's some Vancouver breweries that I want to hit up too, and I don't know if you dive if divulge, but uh, we'll go we'll go we'll go mountain biking, and whether <laughs> whether you divulge in the brew in the brews or not, we'll hit up a brewery and uh, I'll buy you like a non brewery or a non uh, alcoholic seltzer, some of them hippie ass kombuchas. <laughs> For me, mountain biking, craft, and craft beer go hand in hand, especially in Cumberland. Have you have you gone riding in Cumberland though? By the way, sorry guys, round two. I'm I'm swooning over mountain biking right now. Okay, that's like one of my favorite sports as well. I still have to get surgery in my ankle from my last uh, crash. I elected not to get it at the time because I was building a media company, and I really regret that. Okay, well then there we go, there we go, there we go. We'll find we'll find a brewery with uh with some of them uh, THC seltzers. I, I usually just say beers on me, so I'll say uh, I'll say I'll say joints on me, joints and THC seltzers on me when we meet, buddy. Oh yeah, so I used to live ten minutes away from Cumberland, so I used to just ride there. Well, ten minute drive, so about a thirty minute drive. But anyways, so cool that you're into mountain biking as well. Three minutes and fifty three seconds on the clock. Inside low kick by Freddie Rodriguez, left and right by Freddie Rodriguez, but Eddie with some very good defense there lands the left jab on the break. Duke Nukem uh, Quake downhill mountain bike. What the fuck? You be you. <laughs> you be jumping the shit on your way down. Mountain biking ain't no sport. Oh, it's it's a it. I mean, it's it, it's a sport, but it's also it's also potentially a death sentence. I would say it's a sport, much like skateboarding. I mean, skateboarding it's it's different. There's more flair to it, and I mean, but you equal equal chance at injury. Oh, a nice left to right uppercut and left hook. Or in right hook, I should say, by Rodriguez. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't have time to watch Roadhouse this weekend. It's not a sport if defense isn't involved. That's an interesting argument. Oh, spinning back fist attempt by Eddie Frere. Skateboarding isn't a sport; it's a hobby. No defense loss. I disagree, but you have an argument there. I disagree, but you have an argument there. I think you can compete, you know, with yourself 100%. Two minutes, 31 seconds on the clock. White Lightning out here on the river trails with uh, ATV Jeep. Power slap is not a sport. Don't call this sport a sport. Two minutes and 16 seconds on the clock. Body lock. By Eddie Frere. Knees to the leg. There's a body lock by Freddie Rodriguez here holding Eddie Frere. Can't take him to the ground with ease. Even then, one knee planted for Eddie or for Eddie Frere. But he's not. He's not allowing Freddie Rodriguez to like drag him down and and control him here. He's just having a hard time getting back up and and breaking from this. Good game plan here by Freddie Rodriguez in the second round. But this pace, this pace. Theo Gay, what's up, Theo? Bad tornadoes tonight. Well, Theo, I hope uh, I hope you stay safe, buddy. I hope you stay. I hope you stay safe. 
I'll send you a clip of why it's not a sport. Uh, Patrice O'Neal, old bit. Okay, okay. Oklahoma. One minute, 13 seconds on the clock. One minute, and six seconds on the clock. Yeah, and, and Freddie Rodriguez breaks and throws some big combos there in a right hand to the body, then instantly goes back to the body lock. Damn, dude. He's got some fast hands, this Freddie Rodriguez. Comment sports for life. Okay, so there's tornadoes in Oklahoma and North Texas right now. Oklahoma and Kansas. Hey, Theo, stay safe, buddy. Stay safe. It's good to see you here. We want to keep seeing you here. So stay safe tonight, buddy. 35 seconds on the clock. I hope I hope uh, all is well. We'll be thinking of you. Hope, not, hope the tornadoes aren't too bad. Sending good vibes the whole nine yards. Two minutes and 24 seconds on or 24 seconds on the clock, and they break back to the center of the cage. Let's go, Eddie. Let's go. Freddie Rodriguez has been fighting at a crazy pace here. He's, he's got to slow down eventually, right? And Eddie Frere looking for that big shot. Eddie with the left jab. Eddie with the right. Beautiful right hand by Eddie Frere. Eddie with the inside low kick. Now that they've separated on the feet, Eddie's making use of his opportunity. That's it for the second round. Eddie can't do shit. Let's go, Freddie. All right, round three coming up here, guys. Round three. No defense in sprinting. Usain Bolt is a hobbyist. Ooh, there you go. There you go. Send it to you on Discord. I know you don't see those messages all the time, but you should check it. Will do, will do. I try to check, I try to check the Discord at least every Monday on my uh my my personal messages there. I'm just not gonna lie. I got like a flood of them from hockey hockey from home right now, so I gotta like pace myself. Uh, let's go tornado chasing. That sounds that sounds like a gamble. Yes, sir. A damn good hobbyist. So the Olympics are half hobbyist, half sport. I can't wait to listen to this bit. All right, third and final round. Low kick by Eddie. Rodriguez with the left and the right. Keeping him on the outside now is Eddie Frere with those kicks. Exactly that. Exactly that. And a oh, beautiful takedown by Eddie Rodriguez. Eddie Rodriguez going for the body lock, trying to get that left hook in. Nah, tornado chasing is safe. I'm a professional. That's I'd rather go downhill freaking 30 miles per hour on a freaking mountain bike than chase tornadoes. I mean, is there defense? <laughs> can can you defend yourself against a tornado? Freddie's an incredible wrestler. Dude, he, he's actually so good. I love how he broke from broke from the body lock, landed some big combos, and then went right back to it. I'm sorry I doubted him, Chad. I'm sorry I doubted him. Oh, there's the single leg right back to the mat. Eddie Rodriguez did a good job. Or uh, Eddie Frere did a good job of crawling back to the cage, pushing that right side to the cage now. But Eddie Rodriguez, this pace, Chad, is absolutely insane. Yes, you can uh, pull guard versus a tornado. It's like playing chess. 10-7 to Tornado the other day. He just kicked it back to Oklahoma. It's getting close. I'm scared. Uh, do you uh, do you have like a, I don't know, like a tornado shelter, uh, a bunker, or something for these situations? Or is there one locally you can get to, Theo? Two minutes and 55 seconds on the clock here, guys. Again, Theo sent prayers, best vibes, I hope everything. I hope everything's okay, and I hope you uh, find somewhere safe if it does get uh, closer. Beautiful double leg by Freddie Rodriguez. 
Trying to scramble here is Eddie Frey. I mean, Eddie Frey, he's, he's, he's got really good defense, as you can see. And you can see how frustrated he is because this pace by Freddy Rodriguez has been relentless. It has been absolutely relentless, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever you do, don't throw a spinning back fist at a tornado. Two minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. Big knees to the body. Or sorry, big knees to the leg of Eddie Frey here. I mean, Freddy Rodriguez staying active. In this position. I mean, shoot, maybe even Phony Turgeson would like this fight. Probably not, but still. Did I was saying that Phony Turgeson was in the was in the prelims chat? Just ripping on all the amateur fighters, just tearing them to shred. Yes, the fight kind of reminds me of the heavyweight fight yesterday with Chaos. I mean, uh, I think that's disrespecting your boy Freddy Rodriguez, let's be honest. <laughs> Freddy Rodriguez looks so much better than Chaos Williams did. But yes, that type of that type of game plan for sure. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Ooh, knee on the way up by Freddy Rodriguez. They break back to the center of the cage. Complete domination. Tip your boys putting on a way better show. Ooh, nice sidekick by Eddie Frere. One minute on the clock here. Dude, great footwork. I mean, counter right hand by Freddie Rodriguez. Yeah, this kid's sick. Oh, Eddie Frere caught him. Eddie Fair caught him at the right. Eddie Fair caught him at the right. Now, I don't think it was the punch that knocked him down. He was on the back foot, got hit by the punch, and kind of got tripped up. Hopefully, the judges saw that too. But anyways, right back up to his feet. They separate. Straight left by Freddie Rodriguez. Another straight left, and Eddie Fair blocks it. Nice knee by Eddie Fair on Freddie Rodriguez's entry, but he goes right back to the ground. Holding on to the arms of his right now. Locking the guard here is Eddie Frey, but Freddy Rodriguez in the top position. I just tag, tag you on next. Someone say Twister? Was it one that happened today? Holy shit, dude. Whoa. Dude, you, you're a braver man than me, Ganskow. You're a braver man than me. Wow. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll share with everybody here. Dude, look at our boy. Friggin' chasing tornadoes up in this mop. Look at that shit. By the way, go go show uh, Ganskow some love. Go follow him on uh, X slash Twitter. Dude, you <laughs> you're a brave man. You're a brave man. Boom, shakalaka. And that is, end that is the end of the fight, ladies and gentlemen. And it should be all three rounds... For Freddy Rodriguez, the comeback kid should be six and one, and and this was a th this was a very good matchup between these two guys, right? Two guys similar parts of their career, both of them knockouts, both of them finishes, and he just completely dominated his opponent, didn't allow him and give him any room to work. Four KO, two KO, zero submissions. Now two decisions. I imagine he also has a win in LFA. Ruby, the guy making their debut, but he beat a two and one guy. Clash at the casino. I like that. I like that. This guy's gone on four and three. Alex De La Cruz, three and one now. Okay. All right, listening in for the judges' scorecard. I just, I don't just twist, or I don't just t chase twisters on the mat. I love it. <laughs> the comeback kid wins unanimous decision, ladies and gentlemen, and what a great fight that was. Dude, Anthony, that's sick, man. That's crazy. I mean, <laughs> this sounds like so YouTuber mindset, but like, I would do it both for the thrill and to get content out of it. That'd be the only the only condition. The thrill would obviously be part of it. But if I could do content like I chased 10 tornadoes or five tornadoes in in one week. I can only think of the clickbaity titles now. Content machine. 
It's like uh it's like a parasite. It's just always there now. It's always there and it's always growing. Oh, can I do this for content? Can I do this for content? Like even today for uh the new beer um the craft beer review that I will be posting on this channel later this week. Uh, I filmed like a little skit in the beginning of it because, and I took advantage of the snow here. I used to shoot a lot of video, but it made less fun. So now I just live in the moment and bring friends. Well, that's awesome. See, I don't, I, I don't have many friends out here and the ones I do are like getting married and having kids or whatever. So if I had friends, I'd be way more of a living in the moment kind of guy. I feel like I'm a good balance, though. I'm not one who's like, oh, like, I'm not one at, like, concerts to have their phones or, like, throughout the hockey game that I went to, like, yesterday, for example, getting, like, footage to post on social media. I'm more of, like, if I'm if I'm doing something that, like, I, that I paid for and, and that I love in that sense, or, or, you know, in your case, this, like, I'm not usually the content guy, but sometimes I'll plan it out. Sometimes I'll plan it out. But that's... uh. And I feel like a lot of times if you're always like taking pictures of this or, or videoing this, like you don't do anything with it. If you, if you have a plan and you go and you attack it, then that's one thing. Cause that's more like an art project. Right. But if you're just filming and taking pictures of everything all the time, whatever, then you don't even like use it. It's just like, yeah, you're, you're disconnecting from the moment for sure. Is the middle commentator related to Feldman? I don't think so. Uh, two more, two more. Grab some food right now. Okay, go quickly grab some food. There's two more fights, two more fights. I've had two guys in my friends group just pop the question. Meanwhile, I just got out of a six-year relationship. Hey, I hope you're doing okay, though. Hope you're doing okay. Yeah, my roommates, they're like, they're marrying, um, so Joe and Hannah, they're getting married. Uh, the couple that I, that I rent this basement from. Um, my co-host on the Soda Pod, he just had a kid in December. Um... A couple of my friends back home. I mean, they're married now. I mean, the co-creator of this channel, he's married. But Jen loves hanging out with the boys. But yeah, man. I want to be single watching fights for the rest of my life. <laughs> I've made that decision. It's important to balance both. Especially if you like art. Oh my god, this guy looks like he's straight out of KSW. We got Adam Vigil against Ivan Valenzuela. We got the heavy wait. There's there's no way that these guys aren't heavyweights. Unless he's just a very no, there's C61. There's no way that these guys are fighting at middleweight. Bro, they're huge. They're huge. Adam Vigil, 8-1 and one as a pro. He is 4-1 and one in his last five fights at a Colorado Springs. He's 34 years of age. They call him unbreakable. I mean, maybe he did make 185, but I mean, Yoel Romero made, uh, made 185. And if Yoel Romero can make 185, then I guess this guy can make 185 too. But my God, is the KSW yoke specimen. Uh, five KOTKO, zero submissions, three decisions, one and zero in LFA. Beat a five and eleven guy. He actually beat Zach Berg. Okay, he definitely is a middleweight then. Uh, he beat Zach Berg via unanimous decision at Fury FC eighty one, and then beat a three and zero guy before then. Most of his fights have come via knockout, except when he takes a step up in competition. Now Berg on paper wasn't that step up in competition. Yeah, they're totally at one eighty five. That's crazy. This guy's massive. Um, but Zach Berg is very talented. Now looking at his opponent, Ivan Valenzuela, Bam Bam. He's out of Mexico. He's probably got a good chin. A uh, three and two in his last five fights on a two fight losing streak. Oh yes, he was on Contender Series. He was on Contender Series. Uh, I remember this guy now. Four KO, TKO, three submissions, one decisions. Yep, lost on Contender Series. Eight and two in Lux. Went back after his contender series. Yeah, he Claudio Ribeiro. Yes, yeah, so this was uh this is when I first started my channel. Claudio Ribeiro knocked out this cat, and we all thought that Claudio Ribeiro was going to be something. But ha, um, then he went back to Lux and lost to fourteen and O guy Nayib Lopez, who's uh yeah now in the PFL. So th yeah, this is a great fight, man. This is a great fight. I'm actually going to go with Ivan uh, Valenzuela for this one. <laughs> I think he's just a little bit more talented and quicker in his striking. Uh, I host uh, fight parties every week and invite everyone. Usually I have five to 15 people every week. Dude, that's so awesome. See, that's the thing. Um, I'm like that. I have hockey friends, like, because I live in Minnesota now, right? So, and I'm huge into ice hockey and 
that's that's like almost religion here, right? Not not as much as Canada, but it's close. Um, so yeah, we get together for hockey. Like my my friend Mateo, we went and watched hockey. I, I went to the high school uh, hockey state championship with some friends, but none of my friends like fights. None of my friends are into are into like they'll watch it if like they're over and we're having some beers and I put it on, but like none of them will go out of their way to watch it. So I got to start making some more fight friends here in Minnesota. I couldn't pick in this one odds close. Uh, Vigil's reckless striker that can grapple a little, and Ivan's a striker that can't grapple. Grapple seems very seems like an even fight. I'm trying to normalize fight nights the way we do football games or you with hockey. You know, I got to start doing that too. I got to start doing that too. I just got to start putting out a normal invitation and just like not streaming one of the events so I can just watch them. That's another thing too is I'm always, I'm always streaming, so it's tough. I have money on video. Yo, Shane's done working out. Shane, the, the fight just started, so make a quick pick. They're both pretty even. This guy's a reckless striker um, with a little bit of grappling. This guy's a pure striker with hardly any grappling. I'm going with uh, Valenzuela. So Shane will go with Vigil. Four minutes and 37 seconds on the clock. Oh, big high kick by Valenzuela. Vigil's hurt. Vigil's desperately going for the takedown here. Ivan, why? No! Ivan Valenzuela, Valenzuela dropped for the guillotine and didn't even get it. Didn't even get close to it. Didn't even get close to it. That Oh, my goodness. Elbows from the bottom by Ivan Valenzuela. Bro is on the sauce 100%. Yeah, he looks like he's from KSW. Four minutes on the clock. Oh, man. Another right elbow from the bottom. I, I don't know what Valenzuela was thinking there, man. Left from Vigil in the top position. Hurt him on the feet and then drops for a guillotine before he even had anything set up at all and, like, didn't even get it. Like, didn't even get it enough for me to say losing it. Elbows from the bottom by Valenzuela. Looks like he cut Vigil on the side of his head. Uh, yeah, there's, I don't know if that's from his nose or if he cut him with one of those elbows yet, but now that... But Adam Vigil is bleeding. It looks like it's on the forehead. Who win? They're still fighting, buddy. They're still fighting. This is the first round right now. It's the first. It's the first round right now. Good to see you, by the way. Thank you so much for joining. Three minutes and ten seconds on the clock. Adam Vigil working in the guard of Ivan Valenzuela, but if anything, Valenzuela is actually landing the better shots on the bottom. Spam and elbows. Blatant eye gouge. I missed it there. I missed it. How blatant was it? Sorry, I was just I was getting the ticker up on the screen. Two minutes and forty two seconds on the clock. Left, couple big left shots from the top position by Vigil. You expect him to grapple? Who gouges the eye? What a case! Oh, the ref is standing them up. Interesting. I don't, I don't necessarily... I mean, I like that, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I thought Adam Vigil was doing enough. Yeah, I think the ref warned him because he was looking back at him. Oh, okay, got you. High kick by Adam Vigil. And Vigil going for the takedown again. Beautiful, beautiful takedown by Adam Vigil. Right into side control. That was like picture-perfect takedown right there. Doesn't get any better than that. 1 minute 53 seconds on the clock. So the broad, we can't see it on the broadcast right now because facing the opposite way, but the broadcast just said that the cut is nasty on Vigil. Ivan looked gassed. He was rocked early. And yeah, he's uh, he's a little tired, but still was able to get that takedown. So that just goes to show this guy doesn't have that grappling at all. Grappling, e even being able to telegraph that takedown, no defense there. He did swing over as well, but kind of overswung. Modified half guard side control, posturing up here, landing some big shots again from the left side is Adam Vigil. One minute and four seconds on the clock in this first round. Fifty-five seconds on the clock. 
Adam V. Hill. I keep saying Vigil. Adam V. Hill. It's 36 seconds on the clock. Looking for the back take. Looking for the back take. And, and Anthony, you, you said it there, man. You said it. Like, <laughs> Ivan is not looking very explosive here at all. I know he's taking some damage, but it's... It's not like he's been counter-wrestling too much. He's been on the back, defending shots and throwing elbows. And back up to their feet here. Body lock by Adam Vigil. Adam Vigil looking to drag Ivan Valenzuela back to the ground. Final seconds of this first round. And that is it for the first round. Hey, despite those elbows from the ground cutting... Adam Vigil, he still did some damage on the top position, got a couple takedowns. He might have done enough to win. What do you guys think? You think the, you think those elbows from the bottom were enough to win that round? TG, it's tough. It's tough. So basically how the first round played out, guys, basically how the first round played up was Adam Vigil rocked Valenzuela early, got him to the ground, once he was on the ground, Venezuela landed some big knees, cut Adam Vigil, but Adam Vigil was just able to control him, land, you know, ground and pound as well, and then took him back to the ground a couple of times and, again, landed ground and pound, um, but didn't cut him or anything like that. There's not a lot of, not a lot of visible, visible damage. I think based off of rocking him early and then with the control time and, you know, shots from the top, I think Adam Vigil did enough to win that round, but Ivan Valenzuela... If he continues to do damage and Vail does nothing but just lay on him on top, and Vail's already breathing very, very heavy, he maybe could squeeze this out in the later rounds. Probably Ivan won that round. I don't know who won that round. I think Valzuena should get that round. Close round. I think uh, Adam Vail rocking him early should, should, uh, should at least count for something, guys. If it's not you described it, I think Vail wins round one. I'm biased because I have money on him. Close round, though. Close round. I think Vigil personally did enough to win that round in the top position. I think the ref who stood them up shouldn't have stood them up in that case because he actually was throwing shots and trying to posture up even more, but we'll see. And there's a left and a right by Adam Vigil. I did like the albums from the bottom, though, by uh, Valenzuela. Close round, probably split from the judges. Ooh, high kick by Adam Vigil. Four minutes on the clock. Three minutes and 55 seconds. Valenzuela just gets rocked with the left, and Valenzuela landed a left hook of his own. Each of them trade a big shot there in that exchange. I'm leading Vigil for round one. Three minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Looking for that level change is Vigil. Vigil lands another big shot. And Valenzuela, Valenzuela, he's got to be careful doing that. He was pretending to be rocked, like he's clowning a little bit, but like, you can't pretend to wobble after being hit by a big shot, okay? Like, <laughs> that, that's, that's, you, you don't want to, you don't want to play that game. We don't want to play that game. Three minutes on the clock. High kick attempt by Vigil. Left by Vigil, but he gets tagged with a, Straight left by Valenzuela. So far, it's like back and forth in the striking here. No one's really leading the charge. That's going to get him slept. It's going to get him slept. Or maybe a judge who like doesn't, you know, doesn't see or doesn't recognize that he's uh, clowning, you know, goes, oh, he was hurt there for a sec. Now, I'd hope the judges are better than that, but you never know. Two minutes and 33 seconds on the clock. Nice left by Vigil. And again, a counter left hook by Valen, uh, Valenzuela. He's, Valenzuela is just leaning on or is banking on that counter hook when uh, Vigil kind of rushes in and throws those big shots. Leaves that right side open. Two minutes and 11 seconds. Oh, nice left by Vigil. 
He misses with the, the follow-ups and Valenzuela misses with his counter left. One minute, 58 seconds on the clock. We almost have 30 people in here to watch Fury. Dude, you guys are all amazing. Every single one of you. Really appreciate you guys for hanging out with us here on a Sunday. Don't forget to smash that like button, by the way. We're trying to get to 25 likes on the video. If all of you smash that like button right now, we will hit our goal. Don't forget to vote in the poll question, too. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. One minute and 40 seconds. They're still circling. Center of the cage. Inside low kick swing and a miss by Valenzuela. He tries to go high as well. Swing and a miss. Good check of the leg kick there by Valenzuela. Left hand by Vigil. Body kick by Valenzuela. Wonder if Vigil's too tired to go for a takedown again. He's been teasing the level change here. High kick by Vigil. Oh, a nice left hand by Vigil. He's got that blitzing, crazy style that Activate A was talking about before the first uh, first round bell. Faints by both of them. 50 seconds on the clock. High kick attempt by Vigil. Oh! Vigil landed that one. Man. 33 seconds on the clock. Left hook by Valenzuela. Technical, technical striking affair here. Both of them looking for that big shot. Valenzuela more of the counter. Adam Vejo more of the blitzer. Inside leg kick by Valenzuela. Vejo needs a takedown here. Literally, if he can get a takedown, oh, there's not enough time. There's only five seconds. I was gonna say if he could get, if there was like 15 seconds on the clock, just blitz for that takedown, man. And then that could that could win you the round. This round is so close. This round is so close, and that's it for the second round. This, this second round was harder to score than the first round. Valenzuela had some good kicks, but Adam Vigil landed a high kick as well, and is that straight left on his entry? And then he usually misses with like two, and then sometimes will land that break. Hmm. That one's tough. That one's tough. I'm narrowly going to give it to Adam Vigil again. I think I think he's up two rounds by a hair. I think Vigil won round two. Hopefully Vigil gets a takedown in round three. Yeah, if he gets a takedown and even just makes it a boring round, but lands some big shots, he might be able to uh he might be able to secure it. This is one of those fights where like, oh, yeah, I think Adam Vigil won the first two rounds. It 100% could be the other way, right? It 100% could be the other way. Split decision incoming. Close fight, guys. Close fight. Yeah, Vigil deserves that round. I have it 1-1. It was close. All right, round three, ladies and gentlemen. And Faith, it's fun oh, having close know. fights, man. It's fun having close fights. Unless you have money on it, right, TG? Unless you have money on it, then you're like, uh, actually, you should absolutely not. <laughs> and there's the takedown attempt. He goes for it right away, and he gets it. Venezuela went down way too easily. Looking to get back up to his feet, though, is Valenzuela, but body lock by Adam V. Hill, and he's looking to drag him off the cage. Let's go. Hopefully, he lands some big punches. As long as he, uh, Ivan Val Valenzuela doesn't land any elbows, elbows from the bottom, he's in good shape so far. Looking for a slam. Oh, doesn't quite get the slam he wanted, but he does get the takedown. Trying to evade that up kick by Venezuela as he re-enters his guard. All right, he's got to just make sure to avoid some of these big elbow strikes. Hey, don't grab the cage, you cheating fuck. And that is pointed to Ivan Valenz Valenzuela. He is dead to me now. He is dead to me. I don't care if you stomp someone in the face. I don't care if you knee a grounded opponent. I don't care if you soccer kick. If anything, I, I encourage, I encourage those moves. You grab the cage, you are a cheating fuck, and you are dead to me. Remember we had someone in the live chat I was like, you've never been in there. You don't know how hard it is not to grab the cage. I roll my eyes, sir. I roll my eyes. Three minutes and 31 seconds on the clock. Don't grab the cage. Ref, where are you, ref? Three minutes and 23 seconds on the clock. Out of Vils, posturing up, throwing some big left shots. 
Right hand by Vihil. Vihil pushing the head in. Left shoulder to the cage. Bunch of left hands here in the guard by Adam Vihil. It is instinctual, especially when falling. When falling, I don't mind. But when you're on the back and you're like grabbing, it's like, I, I know it's instinctual, but like you should have someone in your camps who like tases you every time you do it. Then, then, then it will be instinctual not to grab the cage. <laughs> okay, maybe a taser is a little too, you know, too crazy, but at least like a bamboo whack to the shin or something, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm only a little bit like tongue in cheek. <laughs> Two minutes and 29 seconds on the clock. Oh, big left hands by Adam Vihill. And look, and I'm no, and, I, and I'm not perfect. I'd probably do it too. If I was watching myself fight, I'd be dead to me. <laughs> Two minutes on the clock. Electric fence. Yeah, didn't we, we said that in one of the streams. Oh, big shots from the top position by Adam Vihill. Big shots from the top position by Adam Vihill. Posturing up, laying some solid ground and pound. Paintball gun when you grab the cage. Maybe, yeah, maybe we should just electrify the cage. It's a very, very close fight, buddy. Very, very close fight. Uh, Mukridin, thank you so much for joining. So far, Adam Vihil is getting the better of him in the third round, and that might be... that. You know, th this might be what he needs to win the fight because either of them could be up to... It could be 1-1 going into the third, or it could be, uh, or it could be Adam Vihil winning going into the third, which is what I thought. Because then the problem would stop... Let's go finish him video. I don't want to get robbed on decision. Adam Vihil hopefully gets this close one, two rounds and a dominated third and a dominant third. Woman in 13 seconds on the clock. Yeah, he's doing enough in the top position to land some ground and pound here. There's some right to the body, right to the head, little muffin shot there, but that left by Adam Vihil, that is not a muffin shot, man. That, that left as soon as he postures up. Don't leave it to the judges. What about when you're clinched up against the cage? Just gonna die. No, they can turn off the electric. Uh... Well, actually, that's a good question. Again, again, then how would you know? Oh, big left hammer fist. Big left hammer fist. 45 seconds on the clock. He might finish this. He might finish this. Covering up is Ivan Valenzuela scrambling here, trying to get off the cage. Big shots by Adam v Vihil. Look at the right eye of Ivan Valen Valenzuela. It is, it is swelling. It is swelling. 23 seconds on the clock. Dude, it is swelling up by the second, like the broadcast just said. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at his right eye. 10 seconds on. Dude, this Adam Vihil guy hits like a fucking shit brick house. Oh my God. He's trying to get the finish with five seconds on the clock. But he's grabbing. Oh, he landed a left with two seconds left. He landed a left on the entry. Oh my god, and you see the fight is over. The, 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 the clock in the third goes to zero. He didn't get the finish, but did you see Ivan Venezuela or Valenzuela looked at him and go, bro, you hit hard. He literally <laughs> said that to him right after the fight. On Black King James, he didn't try. He tried to finish it in fairness. Hey, no problem, buddy. Look at the face. Oh my god, he tried, dude. He tried. Vihil respects my coin. Finish him. It's the sauce. It's the sauce. Decision, decision. But it was close, man. It was close. That eye is fucked. Bro, his eye is so big. If if he had 10 more seconds, he probably could have finished him. That re-entry where he landed that big shot with like three seconds left was insane. Dude, he's been breathing heavy since the first round. Adam Vihill's been breathing heavy since the first round. His muscles need oxygen. Holy crap, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. Okay, I believe what we have... We have a couple more fights. Do we, don't, do we not? It's so annoying when Tapology has the bout out of order. They're like, oh, we're an MMA site. That's where our tie fights are out of order. Bro, get your fucking Fury FC fight bout order together then. They're trying to defend themselves. Oh, we're a small team and we really focus on MMA. Well, I don't think you focus on MMA typology because your bout orders are always wrong in the regionals. And they say, no, like, bumfuck, nowhere Russian regional.
Anyone's unanimous decision? <laughs> so yeah, because we haven't seen. Oh, those are on the prelims. Okay, they've they've been okay with this main event or this main card. There was only two that were out of order. But man, we did Cage Warriors a couple of weekends ago, and it was like it was hell. It was absolute hell, dude. Other than like the main event, they were all out of order, and I was like, man, this is Cage Warriors. Come on. Hey, there's that cut on the right, uh, the right, uh, just above the right elbow. And he said, uh, he cracked me. He said, I, uh, he was a hard opponent. I, I had a hard camp, but, uh, yeah, that was a hard, that was a hard guy to beat. That eye is disgusting. What's up, Strainy? Good to see you. I know you've been lurking, but what up? What up? I feel for Ivan. That's a busted orbital orbital. Uh, Adam one. Yes. Adam one. Adam got beat up and law or Ivan got beat up and lost. Can you let me know the scorecards? Oh, uh, here, let me rewind it. I'm just listening. I just rewound it, so I'm just listening. 30-27, and one twenty nine twenty eight. So yeah, one judge like myself thought that he won all the rounds... One judge gave this either the first or second to Ivan. He's an old guy with a good win streak. Don't know how he how he gets the next step. He said he blacked out after getting cracked. Oh my good. Yes, Dan. He won. He won, buddy. Estevez won his fight, right? I went to work out right after the fight ended. Yes, Estevez. Estevez won the fight. Nice. Good judging. Good judging. All right, so we are on the main event now. We are in the main event now. I thought maybe that the Ruben Martinez and Gonzalez one was going to be on the main card too, but no, that one was also on the prelims. Now I'm just salty with tapology. <laughs> I, I used to be the glass half full guy with tapology. Now, now I'm glass half empty. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Sorry, my voice is just... <laughs> It's been a rough one today. It's been a rough one, but we're gonna we're gonna keep on keeping on. One more fight here, Pfeiffer. What's up, Pfeiffer? Um, Adam one, dude. Adam one. Adam one. Wait, look at look. And this is what I'm saying, bro. Your interns just signed. Oh, the the interns at Tapology. Oh shit, there's a fight going on right now. Did you guys know that? Yes, we know that. We know that interns at Tapology, bro. This is the only one that they could give it to you know, a winner to. Like, come on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The salt is real, ladies and gentlemen. The salt is real. Yeah, this is a five round main event. No title on the line, but a, a rising prospect, the dragon, Zach Borrego, going up against the Beverly Hills Ninja, Jordan Wright. And again, this main event is one of the more, in my opinion, the most highly anticipated main event in Fury in a long time. In a long time. I mean, people were talking about this like two weeks ago. Zach Borrego has been like, been interviewed on in all the major MMA media outlets leading up to this one. Going up against a former UFC guy. I have money on Borrego. I'll fade Jordan Reddit right plus 150 and five rounder any day of the week. Jaden's, Shane's picking Jordan Wright. Shane, I'm going to pick Zach Borrego. Going head to head on this last one. Oh, that's, uh, that's a little sad. I'm not going to lie. Jordan Wright electing to wear his UFC shorts instead of getting some sponsors for this one. Zach Brego, the dragon making his walk out now. And Zach Brego, six and three as a pro. He is three and two in his last five fights. He's on a two fight win streak. 27 years of age. And yes, I know his last two fights, he didn't beat the best competition. Five KOT KO, zero submissions, one decision. Zero and one in contender series, six and two in Fury. Um, lost to Adam v uh, Vihil, but he did take him to a decision. Lost a decision to a four and one guy, uh, Lahuan Davis. Uh, came back after that Vigil loss to beat a 1-0 and guy and a 0-2 guy. Knocked both of them out. So, again, I know the competition is not that good there. Wanted to get back in the win call, but he is very talented. And he, got, he does have some power. 
in those mitts. He beat a three and two guy in the first round via knockout. Yeah, he lost to Bo Nickel in the contender series, so everyone's been dogging him since. But I mean, it's Bo Nickel, ladies and gentlemen. He's the he's the white Hamza Chimaev in regards to how explosive he hit the scene utilizing his wrestling. For them, he's on a three fight win streak, beating four and eight guy, one and one and zero and one. He did go three and three. On the amateur scene. Jordan Wright, the Beverly Hills Ninja. He is 12 and 5 in his pro MMA career. Seven KO TKOs, five submissions, zero decisions. He finishes all his opponents. <laughs> not good. Two and five in the UFC, two and oh in LFA, and he had won no contest on contender series. Lost to Zach Puega, lost to Dusko Todorovic, lost to Mark Andre Barrio. And lost to Bruno Silva. That was, wasn't this uh, Mark Andre Barrio's last fight in the UFC. Was a, uh, or sorry, I was, I was thinking of. Um, never mind, never mind. I was thinking the other French guy. Uh, but Mark Andre Barrio beat him. So I mean, come on, come on, Mark Andre Barrio. As much as I love the power bar, he doesn't have the greatest finishing ability. Nor, nor is he a dangerous fighter. And and uh, and and he and he got him in the guillotine. Bruno Silva. I mean, I'd say Mark Andre Barrio, Bruno Silva, really good opponents in the UFC. Uh, Todorovic is actually pretty good as well. But I would say that uh, Power Bar, I got the th the three named French MMA fighter mixed up. Uh, I can't believe it. So, uh, but Zach Pueg, I mean, there's no excuse there. If you, if you want to be a regular in the UFC, I mean, you can't lose to Zach Pueg, right? You can't lose to Zach Pueg. He beat Jimmy Pickett. Good job, I guess. Lost to Joaquin Buckley. But he did have a very, very good run on the amateur scene. He got a good win in LFA, but he crushed a lot of cans in Alaska FC. Going with Zach Brego here, baby. Going with Zach Brego here. Let's go, Ninja. Who won in which fight, buddy? In which fight? Adam Vihill won the last one. Adam Vihill won the last one. All right. Main event of the evening. We've got a five-rounder, ladies and gentlemen. Look, the crowd favorite here is Zach Brego. Yeah, he's out of San Antonio. Yeah, you can hear the crowd cheering on their boy. Um, is Idaho Skatesman still in the chat here? Or is he out getting food? Oh, dude, the Beverly Hills Ninja is dialed right now. Good. I forget this ref's name, but he he's one of the better refs in the UFC. He doesn't like, and the reason why a lot of people don't like, know him, like, uh, and he's not as popular, is because he actually does a good fucking job nine times out of ten. Evenly matched opponents produce the best fights. Absolutely. Round one. Let's get it on. Ooh, low kick by Jordan Wright. Body kick by right. That karate stance by Zach Borrego and Jordan Wright going for the double leg and gets it. Easy takedown on Zach Borrego. Right into that modified half guard side control. Let's see if he tries to pass or posture up here. Right hand by Jordan Wright. Another right hand by Jordan Wright on the ground. They're not quite center of the cage, but they are in deep water here. No no cage, no walls for Zach Brigo to help him himself get back up. Idaho Steez. And Jordan Wright still in that half guard. Some shots to the body head, body head. Some heavy bag work here from Jordan Wright on Zach Brigo. Arm triangle choke. Arm triangle choke attempt by Jordan Wright. And he lets it go. He's in that top half guard, so you you can't really cinch it in from that position. But if you wanted to grab the neck there, push down and use it to pass into mount or or into side control, he could have done that. Three minutes and thirty seven seconds on the clock. Pushing Jordan right, <laughs> pushing his face up, is Zach Borrego. Three minutes and twenty three seconds on the clock. Oh, 
Who's more active so far? Jordan Wright is in the top position, sir. He's laying on him in half guard. Three minutes and nine seconds on the clock. Jordan Wright now trying to get him out. Jordan Wright's looking for the arm triangle. Jordan Wright's looking for the arm triangle, and he's still in he's still in half guard, but he's pushing his right side to the ground there, and he's gonna pass to he's gonna try to pass to side control so he can cinch it up. Great job by Zach Borrego for scrambling there. Jack uh, Zach Borrego instantly went closer to the cage to not allow Jordan Wright to get into side control to finish that submission. Jordan Wright is now back in half guard. Zach Borrego closer to the fence, but not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. Uh, who are you talking about? Guten? I have no idea what you're saying, buddy. I don't, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you know what he's saying, guys? I don't even know what language that is, buddy. But thank you so much for joining. Appreciate you. Two minutes on the clock. That might be typo language. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Can you guys read typo? I'm not versed in typo, even though I have a lot of them. Two minutes on the clock. Oh, it's German. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good evening. What's up? Oh, I feel bad for, for, for Clown. And then what is up? Thank you so much for joining. How are you? I hope you had a great weekend. <laughs> One minute and 38 seconds on the clock. Still in half guard is Jordan Wright. He's chasing that, that, uh, he's chasing that arm triangle trick. One minute and 16 seconds on the clock. Now trying to get into side control. Man, he's still trying to attack that position. There is Jordan right in the top position. 59 seconds on the clock. I can't see what he's trying to cinch in here. Oh, he's got it. Dars. Mm, he's got it. Borrego's doing the good thing or doing a good job of like turtling's the wrong word, but like clamping forward here. Because if he was, if, if he was more extended, Borrego could get that squeeze a little bit more great great defense by Borrego Jordan Wright was squeezing pretty hard there all right here's my attempt at a at some German 16 seconds on the clock no please Borrego just survive right he's gonna gas himself out and I have a unit on of him parlayed with Fernando Padilla. Can you let me know if a right looks tired if they finish this round? End of the round, ladies and gentlemen. And that is it for the first round. Um, there's a welt on the left side of Jordan right under his eye. I don't even know where that punch came from. Interesting. He looks okay. He looks okay, TG. He looks okay. Just survived to round two, and he did. He survived to round... Uh, Borrego survived to round two. Jordan Wright doesn't look too tired here, but he did He did put a legit squeeze on that submission. And HSV is a terrible team from up north. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. Uh, what's up, uh, Palace Brendan Z? It's on uh, UFC Fight Pass, my man. UFC Fight Pass. What's up, No Chill MMA guys? Go subscribe to No Chill MMA. Great MMA channel. One of the best heavyweight prospect rundown videos on the platform in the fucking world. It's the best prospect video I have ever seen, ladies and gentlemen. Go subscribe to No Chill MMA and go check out that video. Informational interruptions are excessive today. I set it to low, guys. I don't know. YouTube's been going through some updates. Um, I can turn them off next time if you want, though, guys. If it's uh, if it's ruining the experience and it's gonna if it's gonna make you unsubscribe, I'll turn off the ads. I'd rather hang out with you guys than have any fucking YouTube ads. But I set it on low every time, dude. I set it on low every time. I promise. Round two. Congrats, Borrego. Better's right. Probably just major gas himself out. Well, right goes right for the takedown again, and he's in the full guard of Borrego. Right, definitely won that round. 
He should have a dope video tomorrow coming out. Uh, also, legalized biting. Where I arguably had that 10 8 there. Here we go again with the takedown. 1 0 for 1 0, 1 0, 1 0. Dude, we're, we're, in, we're in round two, buddy. We're in round two. Did you sing fuck? YouTube premium is well spent money, just saying. It's YouTube. Well, I mean, I don't mind turning them off. If it's gonna if it's gonna ruin your guys' experience, I don't need the few bucks from YouTube. Stuff to take down Borrego. And yeah, he's still in the full guard is Jordan Rice. Yeah, you guys, I'll, I'll make a poll question for the for the next stream and I'll let you guys decide. If you want me to turn them off, I'll turn them off. Three minutes and 36 seconds. If it's going to make you guys unsub or, or it's going to be a, a problem, I don't want to ruin your guys' viewing experience at all. Three minutes and 27 seconds on the clock. Brego holding that right arm of right from the bottom of right, doing some big, doing some good and good work in the full guard and landing some big shots there. But Borrego, butt scooting to the cage. Butt scooting to the cage. Borrego trying to get back up, and he does. He gets back up to his feet. He gets back up to his feet. Jordan right with the body lock. Hell nah. Keep them. I'm more upset if they turned off. <laughs> Tie clinched by Borrego. I refuse to give censorship. Happy YouTube a penny. Let's go. Working Borrego. Two minutes and 46 seconds on the clock. Knee by Borrego on the tie clinch. Didn't hit its mark. But he is active here. Clinch fighting. Clinch fighting. Borrego back up against the cage. Borrego with the left hand. Jordan Wright tried to throw him to the ground judo style. Good defense by Borrego. This is usually when Wright gasses and quits. Hopefully Borrego finishes him soon. Well, there's five rounds for this. I don't speak German, my man. I don't have a... Translator really on hand easy. Oh, big shots by Brego in the clinch. They're off the cage and Brego pushes right back to the cage. What matches this? Is that what you're asking? This is the main event of the evening for Fury FC. Brego again tried to throw him to the ground and, or sorry, right again tried to throw Brego to the ground and right back up to their feet. Didn't really even successfully land the take. A nice right hand by Brego. As he broke from the clinch there for a moment, back up to the clinch here. And yeah, right is slowing down. Right is slowing down. Borrego already doing more damage in this round so far. Absolutely. Absolutely. Woman in 33 seconds on the clock. He's right. He's definitely slowing down as he hasn't been able to just grab the body of Borrego and throw him to the ground as explosive as he did in the first. No saying combat junkie would leave THPN over a couple of commercials. Best comments for content on YouTube. I, I appreciate it, dude. But like I said, like it, who knows? Like, I, I don't know if now YouTube is just showing more or, or what the heck's going on. Cause YouTube's constantly changing. But yeah, I, I don't, I do not mind turning them off for, uh, for your guys' viewing experience at all. So just let me know. Just let me know. But it's good. To, it's good to have you back in the chat, King James. Cause I, I know you'd be lurking. I know you're, uh, you're watching from afar, like you said, but it's good to have you in the chat, man. 43 seconds on the clock, especially for some Sunday mixed martial arts, guys. You, you know you're real junkies when you're finishing off your weekend watching MMA. And Jordan Wright cannot take Borrego to the ground. Borrego with a big kick to the body. Jordan Wright is slowing down. Jordan Wright is slowing down. And Borrego. Borrego saying, yeah, you want to you drag this into deep water? You, wanna, you want this to be a... A door oh, spinning elbow by Borrego. It was in it was in close, so it didn't do too much damage, but Borrego's gonna win this round. Borrego's gonna win this round. Oh, ads, ads on YouTube. We're still fighting, buddy. We're in the second round. Big elbow. And that is it for the second round. Bro, Borrego. Put it this way: he can't stuff a, a double leg to save his life. However, close up against the cage. He's doing a very, very good job evading that body lock. And now that they're fighting in the clinch for the most part, Borrego's landing some nice elbows. He's landing some nice shots to the body. Yeah, Borrego won that round. Borrego won that round. This was Yuri style against Reyes. 1-1 one, one now with a very gas right. And we have, we have potentially three more rounds. This is a five-round fight, ladies and gentlemen. This is a five-round fight. 
By the big shout to GCN Picks as well. Thank you so much for going above and beyond to support this channel uh, quite a bit, my man. Really appreciate you. Dude, Jordan Wright's got a hell of a wealth on that left side. That elbow I'm talking about, by the way. Yeah, the Yuri style elbow. That was such a nasty fight, man. Poor Reyes. I always liked watching Reyes, but yeah, Ye poor Yuri just beat the fight out of him. Never been the same since. Oh, Jordan Wright with the high kick right out of the Let's gate, ladies and gentlemen. Nice kick to the body by Jordan Wright. And Brago tried to land a jump knee. Four minutes and 43 seconds on the clock. Back to the clinch here. Jordan right, left arm in. Four minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. Der HSV man. I don't know what you're saying. I wish I, I got to learn German so I can talk to our boy here. Four minutes and 17 seconds on the clock. Double underhooks. Oh, that was a beautiful takedown by Jordan Wright. Use the double underhooks and just drag Brego to the ground there. Just dumped him on his back. Four minutes on the clock. Full guard is closed. And Brego is not really close to the cage right here. Brego utilized the cage well in the second round to get back up to his feet, but Jordan right in the top position. Throwing muffin shots in the guard of Brego, but he's not he's not tiring himself out here like he was clinching in the first round. Brego trying to push off him. Brego, some knees or some elbows from the bottom. Jordan right, feet planted in the guard still. A couple muffin shots to the body and head, like just his heavy bag training. Oh, you, oh, you're a pacifist. Well, I, I know what you can, you can, if you, if you're a pacifist, uh, watch the PFL. It's the Pacifist Fighters League. Irish. Oh, thank you. Irish. And what's up, Irish Snack, snack Box? Thank you so much for joining. I uh, hope you had an awesome weekend, buddy. Um, and you speak German. That's so cool. There you go. There you go. Swedish or Australian? Are we talking like the women? Because if it's the women, we're going Sweden. <laughs> I know Jess Ro Ro Jessica Rose Clark is beautiful, but if we're talking women, I'm going Sweden, all right? <laughs> Two minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. The Pacifist Fighters League. 1-1 one, one rounds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jordan Wright still in the top position in the full guard of Borrego. Two minutes and 28 seconds on the clock. Jordan Wright not doing a lot of damage on top, but Brego's not landing much from the bottom either. Nothing ever beats the French girls. Magnifique. Two minutes on the clock. Big shots by Jordan Wright. Right hammer fist. Right hand. Brego tried to employ the rubber guard. Beautiful pass by Jordan Wright. Nice pass in the half guard on Brego. Woman in 45 seconds on the clock. Oh, right hand by Jordan Wright. Left by Jordan Wright. Again, Jordan Wright is in half guard here. Looks like he might use that right foot to push off the left leg of Brego, maybe get into mount. Oh, oh, big elbows by Jordan Wright. Big right elbows by Jordan Wright. One minute and 23 seconds on the clock. Wright's cardio is holding up. He looked dead tired at the end of the second round, but so far, so good. What's up, Mark? Bro, the fight is still going on. The fight is still going on. How many times do I have to say that? I'm going to type it too. One minute on the clock. 55 seconds. And Jordan Wright has just basically been wet blanket all round. He postured up for a few shots, and there's another right hand that he postures up for them right back to the ground. Ooh, there's a nice right elbow from the bottom by Zach Brego. That one, that one is potentially a slicing right elbow. 35 seconds on the clock. Don't know until it's over. 31 seconds. 
Left by Jordan Wright. Half guard by Jordan Wright. Ten seconds left. And that is it for the third round. That's going to go to Jordan Wright. I don't understand. I figured it so. I figured so. Fourth round. Or, uh, fourth round. Fourth round. Okay, I'm going to do some quick Russian translation for a boy here. I need like a better translator app. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Russian on the fly. All right. Fourth round, ladies and gentlemen. Fourth round. Again, big shout out to everyone in the live chat. Appreciate you guys. And Borrego with a big shot and a left and a right. And Jordan Wright goes right back to the body lock to try to take him to the ground. And a great job by Borrego. Borrego evading that body lock takedown. We'd all be betting if we knew who won the how the fight ended. 2 1 to right, but Borrego definitely has a lot more in the gas tank. Who's winning? What's up, Caitlin? Right now, uh, Jordan Wright is up two rounds. He won the first round. He won the third round. But Zach Borrego won the second round by doing more damage. And if they stay in the clinch here, Borrego will do more work in the clinch. Looks like McGregor versus Chandler is official for UFC 303. Durden basically confirmed it after he announced his fight on the card. Oh, snap. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. I'm still, uh, I got a few bets with some friends that Conor McGregor will never fight in MMA ever again. And I, I, I hope he doesn't because then I'm actually going to win some money. Three minutes, 55 seconds on the clock. I, had the, I got the better odds because, uh, well, because he was, he was on the ultimate fighter and you know, he's supposed to fight Chandler for like a year and a half now. So I really hope he never fights in MMA ever again. If he fights BKFC, then, uh, then, you know, then I'm still good. Then I'm still good. I'm going full heel and turning into the most toxic Conor McGregor fan. <laughs> the moment he knocked out Aldo, he was dead to me. Three minutes and 26 seconds on the clock. Borrego still in the clinch here. Jordan Wright with a good old foot stomp. Jordan Wright's trying to drag Borrego back to the ground. Jordan Wright was able to get the takedown with the double underhooks. In the last round, and he's trying to do that here again. Brego, utilizing some good defense here. Oh, Jordan Wright almost completed the takedown. Brego back up to his feet. We're not really even up to his feet. He didn't allow him to take him to the ground, but it was close. Come on, let's go, Brego. Cash my ticket. I'm all for seeing Connor fight again for the electric crowd he brings. I can't wait to see him beating Chandler. I'm not a Connor hater by any means. I mean, I said dead to me a little tongue in cheek, but like, and he was so good on his rise. Like there's no doubt, but like, I never, I never understood the hype. I was like, okay, he's a good striker. You know, I think if he fought Aldo five times, Aldo would probably beat him three. Um, I will say him beating Alvarez was, was crazy. That one I was like, oh fuck, this guy is, he might be for real. When he beat Alvarez, that's when I was like, okay, this guy's for real. But before then, I was like, oh, he's a good striking prospect who's really, really good. But I never, I mean, some people treat him as like a fucking god. Oh, he's one of the best MMA fighters of all time. It's like, no, he's the most famous MMA fighter of all time. He's not the best MMA fighter of all time. So I'm realistic with my fandom with Conor McGregor. One minute, 51 seconds on the clock. Um, I hope they fight at 185. <laughs> Never stalked the McTapper Circus. McGregor's overhyped. He's not that guy. Yeah, I'll let you know when, once the fight is over. 
One minute, 26 seconds on the clock. Still in the clinch, man. One minute, 19 seconds. Ago. Oh, dude, Alex Morono's base, dude. Base. He's like, man, I thought this fight was actually going to be an exciting fight. When I saw it in the fight card, I, I went and showed my striking coach. He's like, this, this hasn't been a good fight at all. Children and feminine fellas, uh, is McDapper. Who's winning this round? I mean, I guess Jordan Wright. Neither of them have really done much damage at all. I was saying, like, Borrego's just been on the defense thus far. As Jordan Wright's been just controlling him up against the cage. I think this ref, I know, I was giving this ref praise early in the early in the card. This ref should should separate them. This fight is going on so competitive and 2-2 for rounds. Hopefully, do you agree? I don't know if Borrego did enough to win the second round, but Borrego's looking for a guillotine. Standing guillotine for Borrego. Standing guillotine attempt from Borrego, and he gets out of it. Does Jordan right, and Borrego with a straight left. Borrego with the left and right. Borrego's going to win back this round. Borrego with a kick to the body. Jordan Wright looking for the takedown. Jordan Wright can't take him to the ground. Borrego is literally winning this round based off those. Jordan Wright takes him to the ground, but unless Jordan Wright can do any damage here, I honestly think Brego should win this round. Lots of hugging and kissing. Let's go, go Brego. Oh, we can blame Jordan Wright for that. As you can see, Brego doesn't want to be in this position here. He wants to fight. And that's it for the fourth round. Four minutes of control time for Jordan Wright. However, he did nothing with it. He didn't even land any muffin shots. He was just trying to drag Borrego to the ground. Borrego should win that round, man. Borrego should win that round. Submission attempt. Okay. Like Jordan Wright had four minutes of control time and he had no submission attempts. Submission attempt for Zach Borrego and the only fucking strikes of the round went to Borrego. I don't know. Maybe down 3-1. Again, that's my opinion. The judges are probably not going to score it like that. He's going to go. He's going to need to go all out in the last round. To be honest, it should be two, two, but it'll probably be three, one majority draw easy. All right. Round five, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, Alex Morono base, dude. Oh, and the ref is telling them. The ref actually just warned them about the cage time. Or about the, the, the cage control there, whatever. Just chilling by the cage. All right, here we go, guys. I don't know if I clicked this already, but I'm clicking it again. Round one. And Borrego with the body kick. Borrego with the overhand right. And Jordan Wright going right back to the body lock here. Right back to the body lock. And no, right arm underhook. And now looking for the... Double leg, now looking for the body lock again is Jordan Wright. Damn, round five, round five, sweet. Yeah, five rounder here in this main event. Five rounder in this main event. Two minutes on the clock. Bracing another dude without ground and pounder. Submission attempt is suspicious as fuck. Four minutes and 13 seconds on the clock. Two two says Pfeiffer. Three minutes and fifty one seconds on the clock, and Jordan Wright with the left hook and oh, there's a nice right elbow by Jordan Wright. Knee to the body, dude. I love it. Alex Morono is just ripping on Jordan Wright right now. Alex Morono is just ripping on Jordan Wright. He's like, yeah, you want to take that step up to the next level again, and and this is what you're doing. He's like, you got to brawl, you got to put on a show, you got to be exciting. And again, and I don't blame Brego. Whenever Brego has freed himself from the clinch here, he's done damage. Ref finally separating them. Let's go. Let's go. Three minutes and 13 seconds on the clock and swing and a miss by Brego. And guess what? Jordan Wright going right back for the takedown. He's going full below right now. Sniffing that crotch of Brego. He likes them sweaty balls. He likes them sweaty balls. Two minutes and 55 seconds on the clock. Two minutes and 51 seconds on the clock. Great takedown defense by Borrego. Yeah. 
Let's see some carnage and leave no doubt. And there's a slam takedown. Beautiful double leg by Jordan Wright. And he gets right into half guard. Jordan Wright might try to go for that arm triangle again, but he's... Don't grab the cage, Brago. But doesn't have enough space between Brago and the cage, in my opinion. Nah, there's a little bit of space now. Two minutes on the clock. I'm sorry, but at this point, it's also on Brago to break free or threaten a sub. At this point, it's over. It's over. Yeah, Zach lost. He's down. One minute, 55 seconds on the clock. Smothering performance here by Jordan Wright. Would have liked to see him do more in the clinch, right? Clinch up, control. Not even necessarily break. Keep the one underhook, elbow. Short punch, double underhooks again. Then go to the ground. But hey, this was his game plan. Leave no doubt. Get back in the win column. I understand the mindset. Get back in the win column, maybe more important than fighting in this one. Right with no action. One minute and 17 seconds on the clock. Um, I disagree in regards to Borrego. Borrego, at every opportunity that, you know, that he could, he was, uh, he was throwing now. Would I like to see him do more? Sure. But I mean, the reason he put himself in those positions, King James, is because he was throwing. And then Jordan Wright would either go for the takedown when he was swinging with or missing with the, the swing. And that's how he got the double legs early. And then up against the cage, whenever he engaged, he would you know, duck under and try to get those underhooks again. Uh, this isn't the type of performance that will get Dana to resign him, but a win is a win. And hopefully my parlay cashes with the judges. No, I, I agree with that. Trying to scramble right now from the bottom is Borrego with 30 seconds left, but Jordan Wright, he's just staying on him. Sticking to him like glue right now. A couple of muffin shots to the body. But again, yeah, Jordan Wright's game plan in this one wasn't to, to strike. It wasn't to fight. It was to secure a win via control. And he did try to go to the dark. He did try to go the arm triangle route at one point. He's going for it again here. Eight seconds on the clock, Jordan Wright. Looking for the triangle, but uh, Borrego's giving the thumbs up. He's saying, I'm just going to, I'm good, I'm good. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Damn, for one of the most highly anticipated fights in Fury in a long time as far as a main event, there is no highlights to be shown. Dude, I, Alex Morono is just ripping this fight and Jordan right apart, and it's unbelievable. Based Alex Morono. Based Alex Morono. Morono is the real winner of this fight, man. His commentary was more exciting than, than, the, than the fight. What an awful fight the ref didn't help either. Yeah, not until like the, the until the fifth round did the ref really try to separate them. Uh wanted forfeiture due to timidity last week. If you don't want to be held against the cage, don't get held against the cage. Yeah, simple as that. Simple as that. He did. I, I was like the only round where I was impressed with uh with obviously Brego up against the cage was when he was actually landing some damage. Whenever they were breaking from the clinch, instead of going for an underhook of his own and trying to push Jordan right into the cage, he was landing some elbows and things like that. But pretty much he was on defense the whole time. And that is a credit to Jordan Wright and that smothering style that he was putting on him. But it just, unfortunately, just wasn't an exciting fight here. This could foreshadow the 300 main event if Hill decides to grapple. No problem, buddy. No problem. It's all good, Hawking from home. It's all good. I just don't want you to make me feel like feel or look like the bad guy when like Alpha Zeta is our friend. Yeah, 49 46 Zach for, or uh, for Jordan Wright. <laughs> Getting back in the win column after a four fight losing streak. The Beverly Hills Ninja, Jordan Wright. Yeah, the same 49 46. He lost round four. Oh, the crowd is not happy here, but fair enough. Fair enough. They wanted to see a firefight. They wanted to see a firefight.
All right. Well, that's it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for this card. Unfortunately, the main event didn't deliver, but I would say most of the card did. Even the other fights that went the distance were fun mixed martial arts fights. We saw a great display of all the mix of all the martial arts. We saw some awesome striking. We saw some great knockdowns, some TKOs, and some submissions on this main card as well. Round four. Round four. We want a firefight. And uh, yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it for Fury FC. Just some quick housekeeping notes before we wrap up here. And again, big shout out to everyone who hung out with us throughout this stream. I really appreciate every single one of you, honestly. I uh, I, I can't believe that we had such a great crowd here for, for some Sunday MMA. Um, you guys are amazing. I appreciate you all. Tomorrow, we got the Rush City Fight Show, ladies and gentlemen, live at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's right. Two hours of non-stop combat sports talk. And boy, is there a lot to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, is there a lot to talk about. It's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a fun show. If you haven't seen the show yet, guys, go catch up on the show. We're on our sixth episode so far. Sixth episode so far. And we will move the show to the Rush City Fight Show YouTube channel once we hit 200 subscribers. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the, subscribe to the show. I had my thoughts, uh, Irish. I had my thoughts. Oh, there's so much. There's so much going on during the week. I will. Uh, I will. We'll talk about it tomorrow. What a case is. That's one one part of the show. There's incentive to tune in uh, to the Rush City Fight Show tomorrow. It will be co-broadcasted on my channel and uh, Jay's the Rush Our Fight Show. He'll be streaming from his channel as well. But we're trying to build up this channel, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to build up this channel. Subscribe, subscribe here because once we hit 200 subscribers, we will be moving the show, uh, the Rush City Fight Show. That is not all these streams to, to this channel and, uh, and tomorrow, what a case I'll announce all the fights that I am excited for this week and all the ones that we will be streaming as well. Combat jujitsu is on fight pass right now. Well, there you go. There's something, there's something. Hey, thank you as always. I would stay and stream it guys, but I have a hockey podcast to do and I got to, <clears throat> my voice is barely making it through this right now. Like every word I utter is like freaking needles being plunged into my neck. So, I got a good poker face, but it's been a rough one. It's been a rough one. Uh, thank you to thank you to everyone who hung out uh, throughout the technical difficulties in the beginning. I thought y'all were trolling me. I thought y'all were trolling me. I guess my mic cord wasn't plugged into my mic enough or something like that. But uh, seriously, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much, Hoggy from home. Appreciate you. You're almost at 200 subscribers. That's amazing. Uh, that's it, buddy. We're done. Should throw some shorts on that channel of the show. Yeah, we're we're going to it's just. I only have so much time in the day and Jade, I told Jade to, you know, you can post stuff too, Jay. If you're listening, Jay, you can, you can post stuff too. Um, it's just, you know, eventually we're going to have to help build it up and, and, and we will. It's just, you know, I got a lot of things on my plate and uh, the most important thing is hanging out and streaming here with you guys. Uh, fight for the, uh, the boring ninja. Jordan Wright won this one. Jordan Wright won with us. That'll help grow um, before you stream on there. No, for sure, for sure. And I'm I'm gonna post the past episodes on there too. It's just uh, it's just a time thing at this point. Like I only have 22 hours in the day because I only sleep like two hours now, and those 22 hours they fill up quick, buddy. But yes, um, some shorts. Uh, the other episodes we're gonna we're gonna build up that channel. We're gonna build up that channel. We're not in like a rush it by any means, haha. <laughs> but. Uh, once we once we build it up a little bit more, and probably once we hit like sixty or seventy, I'll probably start you know putting a little bit more time into it. But um, really been focused on our other channel too, the Soda Pod. Uh, so if you guys are a fan of uh, if you dig my vibe and you like hockey, you can go check out my second channel as well. Um, if you're not subscribed to this channel, I mean, what are you doing with your life, right? We do live fight companions every single weekend, as you can see here. Such a fun weekend doing the Octagon, Ryzen, Bellator, and K1 as well. I mean, what a weekend that was! What a weekend that was! Um, Beverly Hills Ninja one, by the way, guys, we got fishing vlogs, fight podcast. I actually have a banked interview with Ben Davis. I got to get out as well. Um, Alvin, uh, Kuzi Hines, by the way, he's fighting this weekend on LFA. We got music content. We, we got everything, beer and whiskey, tarantula feedings, fight reaction videos. Um, just straight up MMA content, commentary content. And if you dig my vibe, this is my second channel, ladies and gentlemen. This is my second channel, the Soda Pod. This is the podcast that I will 
be recording right after this. Um, and this is the this is the show that we do. This is the this is my show. This the soda pod. So go check that out if you haven't already. Hey, cheers, buddy. Cheers. Hope all is well, Irish. See you tomorrow, hockey. The fight put me to sleep. Yeah, understandable. Uh, but yeah, we will do it. Like you, your your suggestion is is the right suggestion for sure. Uh, came to say, hey, have a great rest of your weekend. Isha, thanks for your time. Isha, thanks for the great streams. Appreciate it, brother. Diego, I appreciate you, man. Diego's been a supporter of our channel since well before we were at 1,000 subscribers. So thank you, buddy. He's, he's still here hanging out with us. I should have passed. Borrego sucks. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you uh, Hope you make some better money next weekend, TG. Uh, you got this. You got this. We always go up and down. We always go up. And down. I made no money on pull tabs this weekend, bro. I'm, I'm sixty dollars, uh, sixty dollars out because of goddamn pull tabs. So I can empathize with with losing money. The pull tabs beat me. The pull tabs suck. Brego sucks. Right sucks. They all suck. No. If anything, I was I was happy with Brego's performance because when he when he could, he at least tried to fight. But yeah, the the clinch work and just the strength of Jordan Wright on top of him on the ground, his inability to get back up to his feet in deep water, he did pretty good against the KJ. It just, you know, just wasn't enough. Just wasn't enough. We are rising. I love it. Pride never die. We are rising. You all are amazing. I appreciate you all. Smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Rush City Fight Show. Peace. I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah.